Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. This is Challenger Approaching, the show that features challenge runs and the runners that perform them. Tonight, we will be having Gymnast86 showing off the brand new Ocarina of Time 3D randomizer, specifically a no logic seed, and Games Table to be joining on cause. We'll explain all that in just a moment here, but just some quick announcements before we get started. If you are interested in volunteering for SGDQ 2021 online, volunteer submissions are open until the end of the day. Go to gamesdonequick.com to find out how to submit your volunteer application to help with the event in the next few hours. If you're watching on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gdq. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Please consider using your Prime Gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. Now, everybody, please get excited. Put your hands together for Jim and uh, Jim and Games Table. I'll leave it to you two to uh, introduce what's going on and you can get the run started whenever you're ready. All right, excellent. Thank you very much for the introduction, Adeps. So, hello everyone, uh, I am Gymnast86, and today I am going to be going through an Ocarina of Time 3D No Logic Randomizer seed for you guys. Uh, with me on commentary, I have my fellow friend and randomizer developer, GameStabled. Hello, that's me, GameStabled. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, we're actually two of the, I guess you could say, lead developers of this randomizer, so... In addition to fun gameplay commentary and probably a bunch of glitches that we're going to have to do, uh, we can hopefully give some insights into, like, the randomizer development process as well as we go through this. Uh, so anyway, we can shortly get started here. Um, because this is a no-logic seed, uh, it is going to, or it has the potential to take a very long time. Uh, because, you know, we don't know where everything is, or we don't know where anything is, I should say. I also can't spell logic. There we go. Choose no logic as our file name. Uh, so, just to quickly explain um, what no logic means for anybody who's unfamiliar. Um, in a randomizer, uh, when you, whenever you hear the term logic, that typically refers to the randomizer's process of placing items in the game in such a way so that the game is still beatable, right? Because it, you know, players of the randomizer would not be very happy if they couldn't actually beat the game while playing. So uh, randomizers will always, you know, go through a pretty hefty algorithmic process to make sure that uh, all of the items are placed in areas that are reachable for you to progress to the end. Now. No logic means that there is absolutely no guarantee of that whatsoever, right? Uh, so the game just said, all right, we're just going to place all the items in this game completely randomly. Uh, there is absolutely no guarantee that this game is going to be beatable, but that's what makes it fun. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> um, there is technically a possibility that I cannot beat uh, the specific seed that we have here. But, um, due to how open you can make Ocarina of Time 3D in the randomizer, um, there's actually a pretty good possibility that we can still, uh, beat the seed. So hopefully that'll be the case. And, uh, we also have a wide variety of glitches at our disposal that we can use to help us get through the game should we not be able to technically get item checks logically, uh, at the time that we normally would. So, I hope that clears everything up. Uh, and with that, I believe we can just get started. Yep. Uh, so it looks like on this seed, we are starting out with the water medallion. Um, at the start of a seed, we will always get a random stone or medallion, um, and the rest of the stones and medallions will be placed at the ends of dungeons as dungeon rewards for whenever we end up getting around to beating those. All right. So I think I'm finally ready to start. So I can give you a countdown, Adef. Are you ready? Sure. I'm not in charge of the timer, but you can give it to me anyway. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck, have fun. Thank you very GLHF. much. GLHF. GLHF. No, not racing anyone, but... <laughs> no, I'm racing right now, Jim. Oh, you yeah. are? Oh, man. I'm playing... The game's unmodified for me, though. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I right. started early. <laughs> I'm already halfway done, actually. Oh, my God. Game stable. Keep the secrets. <laughs> And I can't believe GameStable is spoiling the seed for us now. Um, 
So uh, even though this is a no logic seed, uh, there are still some specific things about this seed that um, are going to not remain shuffled. Uh, you have these specific options in this randomizer to not shuffle things like the Kokiri Sword. Uh, so I'm going to be getting the Kokiri Sword right here. Uh, it's just so that, you know, uh, if we don't get the Kokiri Sword right away, it can take, like, um, a lot of stick farming to really be able to check some things uh, until we finally end up getting a sword, so... Uh, that's why we just decided to pick up the sword here. Uh, yeah, so... it doesn't really change anything. It just prevents you from having to grind money to buy deck of sticks. Yeah. Right, so getting some rupees here. Um, one randomizer option that a lot of people who may have played the original Ocarina of Time randomizer might be familiar with is called Shop Sanity. Uh, unfortunately, we have not implemented Shop Sanity yet in this randomizer, so you're not going to be seeing any random shop items. But we will be seeing random items in Mido's house. We got a Skelchula token. Uh, we got another Deku stick. All right, very good. Uh, we got a second Skelchula token, and we also got a blue rupee. All right, so nothing of huge value in there, unfortunately. I'll be going over here so that I can buy a Deku shield, and then we can make our way over to the Deku tree as our first dungeon. So as I explained earlier, um, the, the medallions and spiritual stones in this randomizer will be randomized to the ends of dungeons. So, you know, normally in the base game, uh, you would get the Kokiri Emerald for beating the Deku Tree. Um, but in this run, uh, not actually sure what we're gonna get. We could get, you know, the Spirit Medallion, or we could get the Goron Ruby for all we know. So it is a complete mystery. As far as the requirements for beating the randomizer go, um, to defeat Ganondorf at the end of Ganon's castle, uh, we will be needing the light arrows, a bow, and magic, uh, so that we can shoot the light arrows. And then we are also going to be needing the Ganon's castle boss key, which in this specific randomizer is going to be locked behind obtaining all six medallions. Uh, so we will uh, be needing to find the five medallions that are left since we started this run with the water medallion. I also think it's probably worth mentioning uh, that, similar to a lot of randomizers these days, a lot of the major cutscenes are removed. Yeah, so uh, a lot of the cutscenes that you would see like at the ends of dungeons, or like cutscenes that introduce an area with like some long camera pan, uh, those have all been removed, so we don't have to sit through them. Uh, because it's just, you know, when you play a lot of randomizers, you kind of get sick of watching the cutscenes all the time because, you know, you want to get to getting all the random items because that's what's exciting about randomizers. And what is in the slingshot chest? The water temple compass. Oh, wow. Very nice. That's a very nice compass to get. And we got our first piece of heart. And I also jumped all the way down because of a weird camera change. Yeah. Um, while making the randomizer, there's a lot of really interesting changes besides just randomizing the items locations. And one of those things is skipping cutscenes because it's just convenience for playing the game, uh, take out some slow sections. Um, and one of the really interesting things too is changing things that players might not even realize were changed. Um, and what I mean by this is certain requirements that the base game makes it seem like they are a certain requirement, but they're actually secretly something else. Um, and a solid example of this is like the the song, the Ocarina song from Sheik in the Temple of Time, which in the base game is normally Prelude of Light. In the base game, the requirement to unlock that is actually completing Forest Temple specifically but it might seem like it's having the forest medallion because normally those aren't different than each other, but the randomizer changes that requirement to be forest medallion. Um, right, yeah. There's a lot of things where, like, um, where you would assume that the game, uh, like, as Game Stable mentioned, uh, in the base game, um, you know, beating Forest Temple and getting the forest medallion are pretty much the same thing. Um, but in the randomizer, you know, those are two completely different things because the Forest Medallion isn't necessarily going to be at the end of Forest Temple. 
Uh, but the game will, like, not be consistent with, like, how it checks to see whether or not you've beaten Forest Temple, which is why some of those things then have to be modified uh, to have consistency within the randomizer itself. All right, so we're clearing out a bunch of Dekatry here. That Skullchilla over there gave us a map, which is not something we want. Ooh, we got Blue Fire. All right, so... Very nice. What that actually means is that we got a bottle with Blue Fire. Uh, and bottles are actually very nice. Uh, this means that if I want to, um, there are glitches that I can do to play an ocarina uh, with the ocarina items glitch. Now, right here, I'm trying to do a trick, a tricky jump where I jump up to the top floor of the basement here. Though it's kind of precise, so it typically takes a few tries. This better here. Oops little too close to the floor this is a funny trick because this was actually discovered originally on Ocarina of Time 3D shortly after the game came out and then afterwards people realized that you could do it in the original Ocarina of Time and just no one had ever <laughs> gotten I it I did not know that lore was B1 skip already yeah. found in vanilla OT ah uh, yeah it was and big shout outs to Green A Link I'm very surprised that I'm not getting this. It's usually not taking me this many effort, or this this many effort, this many tries to get it. All right, well, how about instead we go do B1 skip a different way? Uh, there are multiple ways we can do B1 skip here. Also, we can see what map this is. The Shadow Temple map, oh man. There's a question here in chat, Jim. Uh, they ask, how do you know exactly what to do if it's completely random with no logic? Ah, so, right, if there's no logic, um, my basic strategy is to just check everything that I possibly can. Um, so, like, you know, I don't have to worry about where I find something, you know, I don't have to think, oh, okay, so now that I got this item, it means that I have to go over here, right, because the game, uh, isn't trying to place things logically, so it's kind of freeing in a sense, because I can just check whatever I want knowing that there's, you know, like, there's no, ch there's nothing that I can try and check that is like, you know, oh, this check is definitely not going to be something good because it's out of logic or anything like that. Uh, so it's basically just, you know, check everything that you can and then just kind of hope that you, uh, <laughs> that you find what you need here. Alright, so this Goma fight should go pretty quickly. My broken Deku stick. Just five slashes. Uh, thankfully, there is a glitch where if you jump attack with a Deku stick in certain situations, Link will just kind of keep the Deku stick out, even though it's broken. Um, so we can use that to defeat Goma with only a single Deku stick, and get what is unfortunately a downgrade where the heart container normally is. Uh, yeah, Jim did a mega side hop off of that Deku Baba uh, in order that is to... Correct. And we got the Light Medallion for beating Deku Tree. Very nice. So that's two medallions down. We still need four more. Uh, none of the other ones are going to be as fast as the one that we got from Deku Tree there. You're one third of the way done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, you have a bottle. You must be able to beat Ganondorf. Ah, uh, yes. But yeah, so... Um, as we mentioned earlier... Oh, nice. We got the silver scale. That is exactly where the silver scale was earlier in a practice seat I was doing. Hmm. Very suspicious, hmm. Gymnast. <laughs> I swear it's not the same seed. That one gave me Goron Ruby on Deku Tree. Uh, but yeah, hmm. as I was Gymnast saying... programmed um... the ability to hard code <laughs> item locations. <laughs> that is true. I did make that function. I swear I'm not using it, though. Uh, but with the no logic settings, um, there are of course some items that can potentially be locked um, behind locations that using that item would be required to get to, right? So like, the Megaton Hammer could be locked behind something that requires the Megaton Hammer to get to. Uh, which sounds like it might be a little bit of a problem, but there are actually glitches we can do to like, mimic the effects of uh, a Megaton Hammer swing if it really comes to that. So at the beginning of this playthrough, there's not going to be too many glitches that we do, except for like the mega side hop B1 skip that you saw in Deku Tree back there. 
Um, because there's a lot of things that we can get, uh, like, that don't require us to actually have anything, right? Like, you know, these open grottos and, like, heart pieces that are just kind of floating around on the overworld. Uh, so... We'll mostly be doing stuff like that. Um, the routing here is basically that I'm going to go to Gerudo Valley, uh, and then... I'm gonna get some of the free floating heart pieces here in Gerudo Valley, and then I'm going to take the river down to Lake Hylia and go get some business scrubs who will hopefully have some good items for us. I'm also being very bad about keeping the tracker up to date here. I need to mark that I have a bottle. Remembering to use trackers is the hardest thing. Yeah. Also, there's normally a gold Skulltula, uh that would be about right here, but I'm actually not going to be getting it because I've only set the gold Skulltulas to be randomized if they are specifically in dungeons. And the reason for that is because if I randomize gold Skulltula tokens on the overworld as well as in dungeons, um, it tends to result in a lot of, like, waiting around for nighttime because I'm probably not going to get the Sun Song for a very long time. Uh, so... In the interest of, you know, keeping the randomizer not an exceedingly long length and not having to wait around for a while during certain uh, parts of the randomizer, I have not randomized overworld Skulltula tokens. I might still collect some, though, because we do still have, you know, Skulltula rewards that we can get at uh, 10, 20, and 30 gold Skulltulas from the House of Skulltula. So, like, even though I know this is a Skulltula token up here, I'm still going to get it. This will give us three tokens. Oh, that's... After, I believe, the two we found in... Uh, one in Mido's house, one in Dinko Is that a quality of life change present in OT3D base game, that it tells you how many tokens you have total? Uh, no, that is actually, uh, like, just... It's something that the original Ocarina of Time randomizer did, and so, uh, that's just sort of a functionality that, uh, GameStable was able to copy for making a custom text box. That is a wonderful change. Although, uh, do you want to talk about this game, Stable? There's a, a very interesting text property that we realized recently where some people seem to, like, stop getting the text counter midway through their randomizer playthroughs. Oh, yeah. So we only... So it on, the randomizer only changes just, you know, the text box that normally happens when you get a gold sculpture token. Uh, it turns out that... There's two copies of that text box, and if you ever talk to the parent of the cursed Skulltula family, it changes which one it shows you for the rest of the game. So, we only changed one copy of it, and so if you ever talk to that guy, it will stop telling you how many tokens you have. Which is just such an obscure thing that we had no idea, so... At least I had no idea about that, so... Um, it's not corrected yet. Ooh, okay, we just got the Serenade of Water. That is not a useful song, because we already have access to Lake Hylia. But, uh, if we manage to find an ocarina at some point, that can be used to help reduce overworld traveling a little bit. Uh, so one of the differences between the original randomizer for, like, the N64 version and this one is that uh, this one currently uses colored ocarina models to show you uh, which song that you just got. So uh, the Serenade of Water was a darker blue variation of the Ocarina of Time, which we saw right there. And so, for instance, you know, something like the Bolero of Fire is going to be a red Ocarina of Time, etc. All right, so right now I'm going to actually have to wait for daytime a little bit. So I'm going to try to do this really weird glitch called Quick Put Away, uh, where I attempt to put away a Deku stick right as I walk off the ledge here. Uh, and this is actually going to give us a very interesting property uh, that we can use to get inside of a grotto that normally is blocked by uh, a rock that you would need either explosives or the Megaton Hammer for. Although this is frame perfect, so it can take here. Thankfully, we do have a lot of day-night time to work with, and, you know, if I wasn't trying to do this, I'd just be waiting for the day-night cycle anyway, so may as well use the time to do this. Okay, I think that might have been good, and we'll go and test it. So if I did this correctly, and I jump slash against the rock in a specific way... Ah, okay. So unfortunately, I did not do it correctly. 
Uh, I'm actually not quite sure how quick put away works again, but basically, um, if we do quick put away and then we try to hit certain sources with our Deku stick with a jump slash, we can actually do megaton hammer damage uh, to whatever our jump slash or whatever our Deku stick makes contact with, which is why if we do it correctly, then the boulder is going to explode. Quick put away is present in OT as well. Um, yeah, right, there we go. It's a, this is a weird glitch. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. can, like, shoot it's, it's fire It's one of the arrows. newest, like, weird glitches. I think it's a 2020 glitch. I don't remember exactly when it was found, but it's recent. Is it? Yeah, that sounds correct. And then I'll be collecting some rupees up here. Again, I had to wait for nighttime anyway, uh, so... We wouldn't have really been doing anything else if I hadn't tried doing quick put away. Yep, the earliest video I can find is Exodus from a year ago. Yeah, that glitch did have some really cool implications for speedruns of OT3D as well, being able to essentially do megaton hammer damage without having the hammer. So now in the market, uh... Not really much we can do here. I can do uh, the slingshot mini game, and that's about it. Because the bomb shoe bowling mini game uh, that we can also do is not open until we manage to find bomb shoes somewhere. So I have to be doing that first. Now uh, this right here um, is one of the best parts about Ocarina of Time 3D is the ability to use gyro aiming. Uh, for aiming for things throughout the game. And it will give us a Water Temple small key, alright? Pretty good small key. But the gyro... Oh, sorry, I missed that. What'd you say? That's a pretty good small key. Yeah, that is a pretty good small key. Uh, time does not pass in grottos. No. Yeah, that is correct. Basically, any interior space, uh, time only passes in the overworld and areas like the one Jim is in right now that are like explicitly day-night cycle based. And this Skulltula token, and then I'm gonna wait for night time. Oh, it is night time. Uh, so that we can now uh, bring Richard Z back to his owner for another check. Basically just have to stand around him for a little bit and then he will dutifully follow us all the way over here. Little gallop is so funny. I love Richard Z with <laughs> all of my heart. We were rewarded with five rupees. I guess considering the effort that it takes to take Richard, like, a hundred feet away to his home, that's a pretty good reward. <laughs> yeah, I guess what would you expect if you brought a dog back to its actual owner from in real life? Yeah, that seems about right. the front lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Here's five dollars. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we did get the weird egg from Malin earlier. Um, the weird egg is not randomized in this playthrough because that makes it uh, usually take a very long time before you can actually get Zelda's letter. Uh, and wake up Talon, which uh, unlocks a few more checks. Uh, similarly, we're also not randomizing the Gerudo token in this run, um, just because it makes checking all of Gerudo Fortress like significantly uh, faster to do so. Also, uh, one question that I saw in chat earlier is uh, whether or not this is being played on real hardware or not, and the answer is yes. Uh, this is being played on specifically a 2DS XL uh, that I happen to play all my 3DS games on. Uh, you can It's pretty easy to set this randomizer up on your own console if you have it, um, or if you have your own console, that is. And the way it works is pretty cool. It pretty much just... Uh, patches your own copy of the game so like if you just you know have your own cartridge copy of the game uh, it'll just work with it 
Unfortunately, we do have the restriction that it currently will only work on the North American version of the game. So, uh, unfortunately, it's not particularly easy to get around that. Um, so that's kind of just a restriction that we have to deal with. Um, Jim, would you like me to plug the uh, the Discord for OT3D Rando? Oh yeah, sure, absolutely. If you guys are interested in setting up the randomizer for yourself, feel free to join the Discord and follow the setup guide that we have there. Uh, if you want to play for yourself. You always enjoy watching people play. So now we finally got Zelda's letter, and we got another Skulltula token. I believe that makes it six total, yes. Yeah, definitely one thing we prioritized in um, getting this randomizer put together was making it easily playable with just your 3DS. So once you get through the setup, you get everything on your 3DS, which that setup on its own is fairly straightforward. Um, you can generate new seeds and play over and over again with only your 3DS. You never have to reconnect to your computer. <laughs> Yeah, and like even in uh, like in future releases of this randomizer, um, you'll actually just be able to scan a QR code uh, on your 3DS, and the randomizer will just like be directly downloaded uh, to your home screen, which is pretty cool. So I'm trying to find the rest of the chickens here. Here's the last one. So what is Talon's chickens gonna be? We got a Forest Temple small key. All right, very good. We do need at least one of those if we want to get through all the checks in Forest Temple. Another overworld skill here. here. And then there's actually... Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say that there's actually a grotto at the back of Lon, Lon Ranch here, which has three Deku Scrub Salesmen that we can use to get some more checks. Uh, the only thing we currently can't do at Lon, Lon Ranch as a child is get the song um, that we would get for pulling out the ocarina in front of Malin. Ooh, nice. Okay. Always wins. Worse comes to worse, how you can cheat. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Ferrari's Wind is, uh... Oh, I don't have enough money. All right, hold on. I gotta go back in here. Well, I wanted to get those three rupees. I'm not keeping proper track of my money. Jim, I have an incredibly important, pressing, pertinent question in chat that I'm sure you never get asked. Oh boy, what is it? Are you a real gymnast? Am I a real gymnast? Oh boy. Well, not anymore, I guess you could say. The last time I did gymnastics was when I was 14, and that was uh, about nine years ago now. I seem to remember, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember if this was you. This is like 2013, 2014 brain. Wasn't there a video of you like celebrating a PB or world record and you're like doing a flip or something? Is that uh, you? Well, actually, uh, <laughs> With, uh, there was a Wind Waker world record I got back in 2014 that hyped someone up so much they made a video of themselves doing, like, parkour flips. That's what it was. Over okay, and over that's again. What it was. I thought that was you in my brain, but... <laughs> that video is so but iconic. Yeah, someone did do that. <laughs> Alright, unfortunately, we just got scammed by that Deku scrub. We bought a blue rupee for 10 rupees. That's not what we want to see. Uh, you may have also noticed that the text box when we buy something from a Deku scrub uh, uh, isn't quite correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Game Stable. You know I had to bring this up. I'm actually going to get this purple loopy here. Jump slash through there. Uh, but yeah, so the text box actually says Bach instead of saying OK. Uh, just on, just, it was just a bit of like an unfortunate uh, circumstance due to like how the custom text boxes that we use in places got implemented. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys like Bach. 
There's actually some yeah. lore behind Bach 2. It was it was present on a like a pre-release, like a nightly build, and I thought I had fixed it. So it, there's been some nightlies after that where it's fixed. Turns out that <laughs> the release version, the current version Gymnast is playing on, it came back and <laughs> we didn't notice before <laughs> releasing it. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's basically become just a cool meme at this point that some people have actually requested not be fixed. Uh, so I guess it's part of the 3D randomizer lore now. Maybe we can make a separate option for keeping Bach. <laughs> a whole option dedicated in the rando. Bach oh or I mean, no We Bach. can make as many options as we want. <laughs> anyway, now that we've done all we can at Lon Lon Ranch, it's time for us to go to Kagariko Village. Uh, so one of the longer checks in Kakariko Village is uh, collecting all of the cuckos for the cucko lady. Uh, but thankfully in the randomizer, you can actually choose how many cuckos uh, you want to be required to like get the reward from her. And we've set that to the grand old number of zero, which means that we just get her reward by talking to her, because collecting cuckos takes like two minutes. It's not particularly exciting. Uh, similarly, with the uh, 10 Big Po reward um, from uh, the Po Collector when you're an adult, uh, we only have to collect one Big Po to get that reward because it would take a really long time to get, you know, all 10 Big Po's from Hyrule Field just to get that one check. So, just another quality of life type thing. I feel like one Big Po is a really good change. Yeah, it's definitely a nice also one. Also beach. Oh man, what compass is it? It's the Ice Cavern Compass. Yes, that is my favorite compass. <laughs> oh, oh yeah? Yeah, it's a really cool one. That's. I'm really happy for you, genuinely. Thank yeah. you. We have a question in chat. Is this on GitHub? Uh, yes, there is a GitHub repository. Uh, that you can see for this. I don't know if it's linked anywhere in the chat, but I'm sure someone can find it. Uh, Game stable. You might you also can... be able to find it by just Googling OOT 3D randomizer. I'll do that. Yep. Another Deku stick. Everything development-wise is all public, including the source code and... Yeah. GitHub.com slash GameStable slash OOT 3D underscore randomizer. I'll put it in the chat right now. Yeah, and speaking of the GitHub and development stuff, um, development of this has gone through a couple of spurts of activity and inactivity, but for the most part, it started last August, I believe is what I found when I went back and looked. Yeah. Like, originally, I think you, GameStable, just sort of, like, wanted to see if you could get the general idea of, like, random items to work. Yeah. Like with, uh... Basically, I... Around this time last year, um, because, you know, I suddenly had a bunch of free time. Oh, why uh, is that? Hmm. Uh, you know. <laughs> something uh, happened. Something happened. I, uh, <laughs> you, might, you probably don't know about it. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was you know, personal. Um, yeah, of course. I, uh... I, I just made... So I made... Sort of a randomizer that would only randomize chest contents, and oh, <laughs> neat, neat trick here, Jim. Oh yes, wait, I'm so glad this is. Oh no, okay, oh no, it doesn't work with those walls. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, I, I didn't actually know if that was gonna work with that wall, but it's okay. I needed to wait till nighttime anyway. Jim just tried something that was only discovered like what 2019, I think. Um. An OT runner put blue fire on a bombable wall, and the bombable wall broke, and everyone was like, what? Uh, so that's in the game. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So I'm actually going to, uh, do a trick that you might have heard of before called the infinite sword glitch. Though I specifically do not want to do it when I'm talking. 
someone because that can create bad things to happen. That can make bad things start happening. Uh, so ISG was actually patched. Uh, in or ISG was attempted to be patched in OOT3D by uh, the developers Grezzo, um, but GameStable actually decided to just kind of unpatch it. Uh, so that we can do it in the game now. And one of the really weird things about it is that uh, if you get ISG in this game and then put away your sword, uh, your sword then has a position in memory that's referred to as not a number. And when your sword is like an active hitbox that has that number uh, as its position, it will basically just collide with everything all at once constantly. Uh, so using that, I was able to just immediately defeat every single Skulltula that was on the map all at once, so that I could then climb the ladder and get up to the top. So is this similar to 000, or...? Um, it's actually uh... not the same, mechanically. This, uh, Interesting. This ISG hitting everything, um, property was not really fully understood until really recently, actually. But it turns out that, <laughs> uh... When the calculation happens for whether the sword is hitting some other spherical collision, the game says, well, it isn't not hitting it. <laughs> game Stable, I'd like to say on behalf of everyone that we love you very much for putting ISG back in the game. Or, I know it's still in the game, but, you know, properly back in the game. Sometimes I wonder if it was a mistake. It's so powerful. <laughs> You'll never know until it's too late. Oh yeah, one of uh, our friends, Erin, uh, she actually softlocked in one of her recent playthroughs because she got ISG at a time that, uh, like, she got it in a very specific situation that just ended up causing a softlock because of the zero zero thing. Or it's not the zero zero thing, the not a number thing. All right. So oh, I think I'm actually going to take a little bit of a detour to the bottom of the well here if Navi will show up. Uh, we can do a trick called a Navi dive to get to the bottom of the well, and the reason I wanted to do this now, um, actually, okay, there we go, is because I do have a bottom of the well small key, uh, so that will allow me to uh, check everything that's behind a small key in bottom of the well. Uh, because even though there are three locked doors in bottom of the well, I can actually use a technique called save scumming, and I can only, uh, I can basically use the same small key on, uh, every single locked door. So it's not a glitch that I'm doing, like, I'm not duplicating the key or anything, but the general idea is that I will save. Oh, also, it's also nice. a very good idea to come here because we got a hook Very shot. nice. Uh, so I'm going to be saving, and then I will be, um, using the key on one of the locked doors. I'm going to check what the item behind that locked door is to see if it's useful or not, and if it's not useful, then I'll just quit the game so that I can get back the small key, right? And then I know that I don't have to use the small key on that locked door again. A question in chat. So that's just a general technique that you can use in, like, any randomizer that allows you to save, uh, like, uh, Zelda games do. Uh, question in chat here, Jim, that says, is Dampe patched for a one and done? Uh, can you repeat that? I don't think I can quite sure. it. Uh, is Dampe patched so that, like, you only have to do one dig? Yeah, that is correct. Um, Dampe will always give you the randomized item, and you will, you can dig him, you can dig up the randomized item anywhere. There's actually some uh, I think more. I <laughs> uh, yeah, give <laughs> that one Game Stabled wants to touch on this. So, in the original Ocarina of Time, there's a oversight glitch i don't know where if you spawn the piece of heart from dampe and don't pick it up and leave the area uh you just can't get the heart piece anymore it won't ever respawn you only you only dig it up once so for ocarina of time 3d grezzo quote unquote fixed this by making it so that he will always be willing to dig up the heart piece again even if you've already gotten it so you can Wait, actually really? <laughs> grind infinite pieces of heart from Dampe in Ocarina Time 3D. And... Wow. <laughs> that leads to some funny jokes sometimes. Like, uh, an annual... Dallin 
Dampe's Valentine's Day race, which is where you get yourself to 20 heart containers. Uh, that sounds only horrible. Only from Dampe. That sounds horrible. Yep. So, in the development of this randomizer, though, this meant that <laughs> to make Dampe correctly functional, we had to fix both the glitch that Nintendo left in the game and the glitch that Gredo left in the game. So, Arcade Time 3D Randomizer is <laughs> the, the true corrected Dampe experience. <laughs> Alright, so I thought I got a bottom of the well small key, but apparently I didn't. So, uh, oops, that's my fault. Definitely not something that I got. Still got the hook shot, though. I think I may have gotten confused with the shadow temple key that I got or something. So I saw you get ISG but, before going in, well, almost going into the room that you thought you had a key for. I assume that you can, you know, with ISG being functional, similar to OT, you can Skullshula hover and everything? Yeah, so, um, so the reason that we got ISG there, um, was actually because with the not a number thing with ISG, um, that actually makes it so that, uh, like, the Skullshula will just instantly die. Uh, when we go into the room where it is, and then we can see what it is, right? And if it's something useless, you know, like a Deku stick or Deku nuts, and we're like, all right, we don't care about that. But if it is something useful, um, at least with the items that I have now, I would basically just remember that for later. And if it was something that I wanted, I would just uh, come back to it, uh, like, when I had the opportunity to do so. Interesting. All right, so now I'm going to save and quit. Uh, this is going to bring us back to Link's house because we saved and quit on the overworld. Uh, saving and quitting in dungeons will bring us back to um, the dungeons that we're in. So save warping is a nice way of being able to mitigate the need for overworld travel. Game stable, there's a... And thankfully... Sorry, go ahead, Jim. I was just going to say, thankfully I have enough rupees because I'm going to go to get some uh, Deku scrubbed businessmen in the Lost Woods here. Game stable, there's a question here in chat. What's the total number of randomized items? Now, I know obviously this changes based on what settings you have on, but perhaps you have some kind of ubiquitous answer. Um, I'm trying to remember. The patch used to say the placed item count as you were generating. Do you remember what the number was, Jim? Uh, the total number of item locations in this randomizer is currently 484. There you go. Uh, so that includes, um, well, that, this also, I believe, includes um, the shops, which are not randomized. Uh, so, like, that includes, like, you know, even just randomizing something, quote, randomizing something to its vanilla location. Um, but, yeah, I believe that includes pretty much everything, the 484. So maybe, like, 450. Although that also doesn't goodness. include... Not in this playthrough. I mean, yeah, it really... Yeah, not in this playthrough, but it really depends on the settings. All right, so I'm going to be attempting to do quick put away here again. It was probably too late. Uh, because there are some boulders that we can uh, blow up here in Lost Woods if we have explosives or the hammer that lead to grottos. So the first one is over here. Oh, that was not good. Yeah, with quick put away, it's uh, it's a little bit hard to tell if it works or not, um, because you don't have a visual cue uh, for when it does work versus when it doesn't work in a specific situation. If Link puts away the stick, you know that you were too early, but um, if he doesn't put the way, if he doesn't put away the stick, you could have been too late or you could have timed it correctly. So, a Gerudo training ground small key. Well, that's. Uh, that is not useful. <laughs> yeah, once we get to Gerudo Training Grounds, um, you guys are going to see just how useless the Gerudo Training Grounds small keys actually are. Ooh, oh, nice. Alrighty. We got ourselves some explosives, which means that I do not need to uh, do quick put away anymore. Well, I might have to do it for Megaton Hammer stuff, but I don't have to do it for just blowing up rocks. 
parts here. All right. So bomb shoes are actually a very powerful tool that we can use. Uh, because one of the sort of quality of life improvements that the uh, that this randomizer has is that if you have bomb shoes, you can actually just get bomb shoe drops, uh, like from pots or in grass. Oh, that's lovely. Right? You never have to worry about potentially running out of bomb shoes. Jeez. Yeah, the bomb shoe drops is a feature that the main, uh, like the main release of OT randomizer, uh, hasn't merged in yet. Um, so it wasn't necessarily on the to-do list before this came out, but it just sort of happened, and we love it, so we we got it out there. Yeah. All right, so we can use the bomb shoes to open up a hidden grotto here. Defeat two more wolfos. This room is actually very beautiful, and I like how they've done it in 3D. It's definitely the most beautiful room of the game. Unfortunately, it just contains a hard piece, so I don't like it anymore. But. Wow, Jim is so easily swayed. <laughs> Guys, Jim just turns on a dime like that. And then we got one more check back here in Sacred Forest Meadow uh, with Saria. Normally, this is where we get Saria's song. And like the cutscenes at the end of Dungeons, um, the cutscenes where you learn songs, uh, I mean, the cutscene's basically just gone, and then you'll get whatever item you're normally supposed to get right here. Which is more Deku Nuts. Oh, but actually, it's a Deku Nut upgrade. So we can now carry 30 Deku Nuts instead of just 20. And then we can make our way back out. I feel like those upgrades have a habit of usually showing up at the perfect time. Like, right exactly when you want to refill. Yeah, I find that also. I mean, regardless of how many Deku Nuts you, like, already had, getting the upgrade is going to give you at least ten more. Always very nice. Alright, uh, next, since we have the Silver Scale, I think we're going to um, head down Zora's River. We can just dive down here. We could also do a Navi Dive to get down here and get to this loading zone, but the Silver Scale is obviously a lot faster. I'd like to take this... So there are two oh, go ahead, Jim. freestanding heart pieces here. One of them is a Sculptula token. So we don't really care about that one. So I'm just going to get this Sculptula token. I'd like to take a moment here just to say that uh, if you're enjoying the content, be sure to follow the runner, twitch.tv slash gymnast86. Link should be showing up in the chat in a moment here. Jim does lots of 3D Zelda speedruns and is uh, one of the developers on this randomizer. So definitely drop a follow if you are uh, enjoying the, the evening. Yeah, there's a lot more features that we have planned for this randomizer than are currently available, so. Uh, you will probably see playthroughs of those in the future. Also, I do not have enough rupees for what I want to do. Uh, because we've randomized magic beans in this playthrough, uh, the bean salesman, who we will refer to as Bean Daddy, <laughs> um, actually gives us a random item if we pay him 60 rupees. So, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, hello, Maddie. I guess we'll just fly over to it. Oh, is it? Oh, I think it's what we want. Oh, oh boy. Oh, yeah, or, well, okay, good. <laughs> We did indeed just find the Megaton Hammer. Uh, so that's very good. Uh, the Megaton Hammer will allow us to get through a lot of things as adult Link. Alright, so since I unfortunately lost my Cucko, uh, I'm gonna try to do a Mega Flip right here to get down to this side of Zora's River. Uh, okay, very good. Wow, there's so many more flashes in this version of the game. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, four, five, six, seven, and then it just kept going. <laughs> yeah, so having the Megaton Hammer already is very good news. 
And then if we get this check here, ooh, double defense. All right, I will take that. Not like particularly important for anything, but double defense does mean that we probably will not be dying as much. If at all, considering that we already have six hearts. It might be worth explaining like mega flips and mega side hops uh, for the uninformed. Oh yeah, so um, I'm actually not quite sure what the mechanics are um, behind them, to be honest. Uh, I just know that, you know, Link will obviously, uh, like, Link will get pushed back at very high speed momentarily by an explosion, and if you do a backflip or a side hop while Link is getting pushed back like that, um, you can get a very high speed backflip or a very high speed side hop, which will go backwards. I think it's just shielding damage in general. Uh, yeah, shielding damage in general, that's correct. I don't know if Game Scable can provide it. Maybe a more nuanced description of it. Uh, I do not know the exact mechanics on why uh, Mega Psy Hops and Mega Flips happen. It has yeah, something like, to like do with invincibility for frames. Same with Hessing, I oh, believe. Okay. Yeah, like the invincibility frames you get at the end of a roll, which is why you can also do them with just Nehru's love. Yeah, because you don't need the shield right. active. And it's also why you have a billion frames for Nehru's love, Hesses. Hey, look, that's what we were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so this is a forward extended super slide. Uh, this is not one that uses shielding, but it uses uh, just the damage that you normally, or the recoil that you normally take. Um, when you get hit by an explosion or like an enemy. And now we can finally open up this uh, wall right here that I tried to open up with blue fire earlier, but it didn't quite go very well. Yeah, so Jim is holding ESS position, which actually comes from this game. Uh, it stands for extended super slide position, which is not really relevant in almost every other game where people talk about it, but anyway. Um, it's just the name for it, and it is the region just outside of the dead zone of your control stick. Uh, and it is, when you hold it, Link turns rather than moving, and that allows you to do some funky stuff. Yeah, it allows you to basically preserve the speed that you get, uh, through specific interactions. Oh, what? Okay. I guess that must have hit the silver rock. Alright, so we got two chests back here and another skull token. So we're going to give us our second forest temple key. And another blue rupee. So that's 18 tokens. Alright, so there's actually another chest um, that we can get in this room. I'm actually going to be doing a hover to get over to it uh, using the bomb shoes that I have if I can side hop on top of this chest. There we go. Alright. So, hovering in this game is actually significantly easier um, than hovering in the original Ocarina of Time because of the fact that uh, the explosion radius of an explosive will actually, uh, like, increase in rate... Uh, the explosion radius will increase faster thanks to the increased frame rate of the game. So, it basically allows for, like, Majora's Mask-style bomb chew hovering. Yeah, I was just about to say, uh, like, you did not is incredibly useful. Your backwards momentum wasn't halted or anything, and you hovered just fine with just backflip hovers. Yeah, there's a, a lot of uh, instances of things in Ocarina of Time 3D that were not adjusted for the new frame rate, and it makes various things either easier or harder or impossible sometimes. All right, so there's a few more things uh, get out in Hyrule Fields, uh, just like grottos that have uh, rocks over them that we can blow up in bomb shoes. And then I'm going to be going to Lake Hylia, and um, I'm going to be using my uh, silver scale to get into Zora's Domain. So as Child Link, there's actually two ways you can get into Zora's Domain. You can play Zelda's Lullaby in Zora's River. 
uh, to get to Zora's Domain, or you can dive down in from Lake Hylia to get to Zora's Domain. I remember the first time that I played any Ocarina of Time randomizer at all, I was... Like, that was the one thing that I forgot about that would have made my seat a lot easier if I had realized it, that I did not need Zelda's lullaby to get into Zora's Domain as child. More blue rupees. Had to bunk that tree, of course. Ooh. Thank you, nuts. Yeah, something cool about these randomizers um, is that even with logic, you often have to do uh, strategies that you wouldn't have ever considered, maybe, in a casual playthrough. Things like using the silver scale to go to Sora's domain from, like, Hylia. So another hidden grotto right here. Or another Shadow Temple small key. Climb the ladder to Lake Hylia. But yeah, um, like the fact that you can, you know, uh, the fact that there are a lot of unintentional strategies obviously comes from the fact that uh, you can basically, or there's the possibility of you being able to use pretty much any item right away, depending on like where items get placed. Um, and so there are actually some other like things that you kind of have to account for on the development side. Um, due to the fact that you now can, or due to the fact that the player now has items a lot earlier than they normally would, like in the vanilla game. Uh, so like, the, the biggest example of this is in the Fire Temple. Um, there's normally a locked door right at the beginning of Fire Temple, uh, that you actually can't, uh, get to until you have the Megaton Hammer, right? Also, it looks like we have a, uh, a song right here. I want to say this is the Song of Storms? Yes, all right, very cool. So we'll file that away for later use because we still don't have an ocarina, so playing songs still takes a bit of a glitch setup to do. Uh, but back to the Fire Temple. Um, so like at the beginning of the dungeon, there's a, there are two locked doors, right? There's the one that the players can just go to normally and there's one that the players can go to uh, for the boss key loop if they already have the Megaton Hammer. But before those two doors, there's only a single small chest that the players can get, right? So logically, to um, progress through the Fire Temple at that point, you need to, like, the player needs to get a small key, right? Like, there's no other choice there. Um, but this presents a problem because as the developer, you can't, like, force the player to use that small key on a specific door. Right? So you don't know which door the player is going to try to use the small key on. Uh, which presents a little bit of a logical roadblock in Fire Temple, because, you know, if you just are like, oh, okay, yeah, like, the player should just use the locked key on this door, like, well, the player is not going to know that you want them to do that necessarily. Um, so you sort of have to put a safeguard in place to make sure that the player can't accidentally lock themselves out logically of being able to beat the temple, for instance. Uh, so, the solution that we currently have in place for that, which, um, the original Ocarina of Time randomizer also does to an extent, is we just completely remove the locked door that would be behind using the Megaton Hammer. So it's just like a regular door that doesn't have a lock on it anymore. Which greatly simplifies, like, uh, you know, what you would have to do to, like, uh, force the player to try to use the first locked, or use the first key that they get on a specific locked door. Now we're gonna check the heart piece chest that's over here. But we have to light all the torches to make this happen. Gymnast is the logic pro for this randomizer. Yeah, the, the biggest role that I took on in development was more or less just copying over the logic from the original game uh, and adapting it for Ocarina of Time 3D. 
Um, a lot, like 99% of it works the exact same way, right? Because this game is a very faithful remake of the original Ocarina of Time. But there are a few things that needed to be accounted for, uh, where 3D is different and there would be different logical requirements necessary for some things. But they're all like typically small mundane things, uh, like a sculptural a token being in like a slightly different location or something like that. Anyway, uh, because we don't have Rudo's letter, we're going to use a technique called a triple slash clip to get past King Zora here. And get out to Lord Jabu Jabu. And then once we're out here, um, I'm going to be using a Deku Stick jump slash to clip inside of Jabu uh, so that I don't have to go and get a fish uh, to be able to get inside Jabu. Jim, you have an empty bottle. I mean, because I do have a bottle, I could go get a you fish. You could have gotten a fish for the fans. <laughs> I mean, I guess I do technically need to collect a fish anyway. Or I don't necessarily need to collect a fish, but... Um, it might be useful to collect a fish for a glitch that we might want to do in the forest temple. All right, so one of the quality of life changes about Jabu is that we don't have to go through any of the cutscenes with Rudo. We just instantly can uh, pick her up and escort her through the dungeon. So I don't have the boomerang right now, which means that I probably won't be able to complete uh, Jabu, but I still wanted to go here uh, anyway, just because, you know, who knows, there might be something useful here, just like there was in Bottom of the Well. Like a recovery heart, for instance. That's useful. Nice. Did you see that Stingray doing backflips? Yeah, 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 if you collect the item while the Stingray does that, I think they just keep on doing that forever, like until you actually uh, finish collecting the item. The biggest heresy in Ocarina of Time is still that the bubbles are called shabams and the bubbles are called bubbles. <laughs> oh, actually, speaking of shabams. Oh my gosh. You, you <laughs> uh, Game Stabled over here is actually the resident shabam expert of Ocarina oh, of Time. Oh, is this true? In case none of you guys Game knew. Stabled, I, I would uh... love a, a, like a dissertation level just tell me everything there is to know. Um, okay, well, here, I'll tell you two interesting facts about Shabobs. I love that. Um, if you shoot them with a slingshot, they gain, they absorb one-tenth of the momentum from the sea. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so you can, you can, and it's like a, it's vector addition, so you can, you know, change their velocity by shooting them, and they get one tenth of the momentum out of the deck seed. And this is amazing. The much more potentially interesting thing: there's an unused behavior in the Shabams that uh, all the code is there; they just don't use it. But if you attack them instead of exploding, they will like get very small and like expand back to full size and never die they'll sort of just like constantly linger and grow back to shape games table thank you for blessing me with this knowledge yeah it's very crucial knowledge actually probably i would agree for more daily shabam flax please uh follow game stabled on twitter oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> twitter.com slash game stabled So in this room, I first want to equip my Deku Nuts. And actually kill the first Stingway, Stingway, Stingray with Rudo. I don't have to worry about it. So after this, I mean, unless this chest is the boomerang, which would be uh, probably not. Oh, well, we'll take that anyway. Uh, We'll pretty much only be able to get a few more Skulltula tokens here, and then we won't be able to actually beat Jabu until we have the boomerang. There's some more Skulltula tokens we can get down here. Because I have the slingshot, I can actually easily run over here to see what it is. So, these uh, beery enemies are a bit annoying when you can't kill them. So that is a heart piece, and this... 
Ooh, that's a small key. Mm. I only have seven bomb shoes, so I'm actually not very confident that I'll be able to hover back up there. There is a I think cool we'll, strat we'll hope you can that, do. Uh, <laughs> the berry you hover. To. You can a cool. You mean the the anti grav? You can get ISG in the room above, and then side hop down with your shield out and stick to the gold sculptula, like hover. Oh yeah. And it will kill the sculptula, <laughs> and then you get its reward. Now, I'll think about that while I set up this trick. And so there's actually a trick that I'm going to try to do here. I'm probably going to fail it, but I want to try it anyway. Okay, yeah. Uh, I wanted to try and mega flip off of that beery right there, because there's one more gold sculpture that I can get deep within uh, the dungeon here. I can't beat the dungeon the normal way to go get it, uh, because that requires the boomerang. But try it one more time. If we don't get it, then uh, it's not a big deal. Game stable, can I ask one more cursed question about the Shabams? Uh, yes. My brain won't leave me alone. I'll let Jim try this and then um, I'll, I'll just let loose with my question. I hope I know so it. This time I'll try doing it. Try. I don't want to run out of bomb shoes right here, so. Okay, yeah, so unfortunately a little too far forward. Right, well, that's fine. So, game stable. Yes. You said that shooting projectiles at the Shabam is like vector addition. Mm -hmm. Do they maintain those or do they continue to accelerate in whatever they were already doing? So, like, if I shoot a, a Shabam in exactly the opposite vector of its current movement vector, can I get it to stay in place forever? Um, not quite, because they're subject to gravity. Ah. And if I... So, now I'm getting into... So, when they detect that they hit a wall, they get some random amount of... Okay, it's not actually really random, but <laughs> they get some some velocity from the wall um and i think that eventually gravity will get it down to the floor and even if it's sitting on the floor it will uh still see that it touched to the floor and get a little bit of oomph from it this greatly saddens me yeah so i don't I don't think you could quite get them to just stand still forever, unfortunately. But I could be remembering wrong, actually. I can't believe Game Stable killed Adef's Shabam dreams. I just, I don't know what to do anymore. I used to go to sleep just dreaming about Shabam's never moving again. And now, I can't have that anymore. I don't know. I'm gonna be quiet for a bit, guys. I'm sorry. All right, well, so now we can get one of the checks that uh, requires the slingshot. And it's, of course, more Deku Nuts, because, you know, what else would we get? Right, well, we've done quite a bit of stuff as Child Link so far. Uh, I believe it might be time for us to move on to doing stuff as Adult Link. Uh, since Adult Link has a lot more utility than Child Link typically has. You know, well, allow us to go through a lot more dungeons. All right, I'm back. I had some time to think, and I've decided that I still like Shabams. I can respect that decision. My opinion of Game Stable has changed greatly, though. <laughs> <laughs> I will just be back walking across Hyrule Field here. Now, there is a patch of grass that I'm gonna try to tackle those so that I can hopefully get some more bomb shoe drops. So got ten more bomb shoes. Am I up to date on my tracker? I think I am. I guess we can also get a red ruby. 
Imagine how many more features this randomizer could have had by now if I didn't spend so much time studying shabams. <laughs> didn't you didn't you study shabams before working on this? Uh I think so. It, it's something that I left unfinished for a while and then went back to. Just couldn't stay away. Look, if no one else is gonna thank you for your work, I'll do it, so. Alright, so we don't have any cutscenes in the Temple of Time or cutscenes related to like having to pick up the Master Sword, so we'll just immediately be a dull link after we pick this up here. Uh, the specific uh, capture board manufacturer for this was Katsukitty. Um, although the board was actually like soldered on by the uh, European distributor Murky, who unfortunately I don't think is making boards anymore. I think both of them are done. Katsukitty went out of business and Murky is done. Yeah. And Loopy is <laughs> always on those forums saying he's gonna make more. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think there was a batch that went out recently from Loopy. But yeah, I it was like uh, maybe again. nine months ago, but it was only for base 3DS. I think. Oh, actually. I just remembered something. I have bomb shoes, which means that it is time for Christmas. <laughs> Let's see, I have... Yeah, 17 should be enough. All right, so um, to create the rainbow bridge to Ganon's castle uh, in this randomizer, we technically need to get all six uh, sage medallions. Currently, we only have two. We only have the light medallion and the water medallion. Um, however, because this is no logic, there very well could be something that we need inside Ganon's castle that we do not have yet. So I am actually going to go into Ganon's castle early with the power of easy bomb shoe hovering. Oh, you have a key in there as well. Yeah, I do have the key. Although the, the key is not particularly useful right now, um, because of the fact that the one chest the key locks requires Zelda's lullaby, uh, which is another item that we do not have for a song that we don't have. So I would like to back this up on two. No. All right, so I got ISG off of the like little text that you get for checking the Golden Gauntlet stone. Now I can do, again, Majora's Mask style bomb shoe hovering here. Oh my god, it's so easy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so you easy. You don't even have to Kakiri over, over there and anything. only five. <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Yeah, you can get over there and only five bombs. In shoes. base OT, you're like, all right, I've got eight. That should be enough. <laughs> <laughs> So first, I'm actually, uh, because none of the trials are enabled, we can just immediately go into here. Again, we're not beating the game right now because we don't have the Ganon's Castle boss key, so we wouldn't be able to get um, all the way up to Ganondorf anyway. And we also don't have a bow or light arrows or magic, so even if we could get to Ganondorf, we wouldn't be able to beat him. Fighting Dynalphos no, without magic, oh my gosh. gosh. Okay, we got taken us. Also, OT3D does not have Power Crouch Stab, correct? That is correct. There is no Power Crouch Stab in this game. A couple people have suggested putting that back in for the randomizer, but it's my philosophy, and I think gymnasts and probably other developers, that we actually don't want to do that. Um, the lack of Power Crouch Stab is kind of... I feel at least like kind of core to that separate identity of OOT 3D. Um, and, and I think it's actually part of the fun of the game, like introducing more unique uh, combat strategies. So, yeah, I don't know, just some developer insight for you. Hey, I respect that position. Yeah. I would say that I'm kind of the same way also, though. Uh, oh, another GTG key, how useful. <laughs> Um, I would say that I'm not, like, strictly opposed to making it, like, an option that people can select if they want to. 
Yeah, sure. But, like I personally myself would never use it if it was an option. Yeah, if it was if it if if it was developed and it could totally be an option, but uh, yeah, it's not not a setting that I personally um, would use. I think. Yeah, Grezzo fixed quote unquote power crouch stab in OT 3D, which always begs the question if it was intended or not. Like obviously the use of power crouch stab in OOT is further than what Nintendo probably would have wanted, but whether or not the like base mechanic is intended is weird. It was actually fixed it probably in, wasn't. Um, in the US release of Majora's yeah. Mask as well. Oh that's right, right. yeah. I'm leaning towards it probably wasn't intended, but, like, at the same time, it's so cool and so useful, like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Makes fighting things a lot easier. It also makes ISG, like, super useful, even more so than yeah. it already is. Alright, so we've collected a few things in Ganon's Tower so far, but we haven't quite hit Christmas time yet. Uh, so... Uh, for Christmas, uh, Christmas refers to the circle of chests that's in the light trial. However, the light trial is blocked by a giant stone uh, that you need golden gauntlets to normally get out of the way. But instead, we can use uh, two tricks. The first one is going to be our good friend, the bomb shoe hovering, to get on top of the stone. Good, yep. And then we're also going to do a trick known as a ledge clip, uh, where we can change the way or the angle that Link has when he falls down a ledge by targeting a wall on the same frame that we grab the edge. So now Link is inside the stone, and where are we? There we go. You've gotten past it. And now we are in the Christmas room. So there are six chests here. Uh, once I defeat these enemies, a seventh one will spawn. And so now we get seven straight checks all in a row. So let's see what the randomizer has prepared for our Christmas today. More bomb shoes, all right. We'll always take more bomb shoes. Another Druido Training Grounds key, which we will not be using. Old Sculptula token. We have a heart piece. We have Deku Nuts. We have another gold Skeletula token, and finally, we have a blue rupee. All right, well, I guess we were naughty for Christmas this year, so we didn't get anything good. It's probably something relating Sorry. to Shabombs, if I had to guess. Wow. <laughs> See, at some point, you just now have to get the embrace rest of the memes. These Deku scrubs. We did get the claim check. Uh, oh, and we got a Gorm too. Next so I have good. a question about the fact that you just got the claim check because yes. the child trade sequence was in proper place. Um, so is the adult trade sequence just randomized or? Uh, yeah, currently for the adult trade sequence, um, it basically doesn't exist. <laughs> we basically just. Uh, like, the simplest implementation of it is to just throw the claim check into the item pool uh, and then have players turn that into Big Goron at the top of Death Mountain uh, Trail. Because there's there's a bunch of uh, complicated logic that would have to go into, like, making sure that, you know, the trade quest is beatable. Right. Uh, if we wanted to, like, leave it the same way, so... Uh, as sort of just, like, a placeholder for now, we just throw the claim check into the item pool. Makes sense. Right. So, I mean, I guess we got the Goron Tunic, we can equip that and make our way over to Kakariko Village so that we can do all the fun stuff we have there. You could go for the RNG Let's Big Poe. <laughs> I, I could go for the RNG Big Poe. Isn't that only like a 10% chance? I want to say it's 1 in 8, but I'm not sure. I think Games Table oh. is right. Yeah, I think it's one and eight, but if you're on Epona, it's obviously greater. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's like it's basically guaranteed if you're on Epona. I mean, I also I still don't have the bow, so it would be pretty hard to kill the big bow if I did manage to get one. 
Okay, I guess we're just gonna climb that ledge. Uh, because we have more than 20 gold Skulltula tokens, there's another check we can get here in the house of Skulltula. Ooh, wow. All righty. That means that we can now beat Jabu Jabu's belly. So what are the Wanna... what are the ways to find out the medallions and stones that are placed at the end of each dungeon? Uh, so yeah, currently uh, we just show them to you inside the menu that we've created. Um, also nice green rupee. Uh, it's the same menu that shows you like um, how many keys you have in each dungeon and whether or not you have the boss key for those dungeons. Uh, so yeah, I haven't filled the like I haven't filled that out yet, uh, but it's something that I should probably do at some point. But first, we have to race our good pal Dampe now. And actually, I forgot there's a bomb or a bomb chew drop that we can get back here. Uh, so Dampe is actually a little bit easier, or the Dampe race, I should say, is easier in 3D because of the fact that Link just kind of rolls faster uh, compared to the N64 version. So you can get times of like, you know, mid to low 40s uh, with the race in OOT 3D. Whereas usually you'd be getting like a high 40s time uh, in the original game, assuming you don't hit any fire, of course. It's funny, right after this uh, randomizer came out and we saw some people playing it who are used to um, N64 OT, uh, a lot of them were like, oh my gosh, on my first try, I gotta do PB on the Dampe race. <laughs> a 44? <laughs> wow, does anyone have this? <laughs> I thought you had yeah, to ask for sub 45. Ooh, sorry, a song. Okay. Definitely take that. Uh, I do not have the Song of Time or an Ocarina, so I would like to void out here instead of getting trapped back there. Dampe race a second time. Because Dampe has two items. There's the item in the chest, and then there is uh, the heart piece that he normally spawns. This is another one of those, like, um, interesting item locations that needed to be patched for the randomizer, because in the base game, the way Dampe determines which reward to give you here is not actually whether you've already won the race once, it's whether you already have the hook shot. And in fact, it's not even that, it's whether you have an item in your hook shot slot. So that's one of those like strange, obscure things kind of that the randomizer needs to correct. Uh, so that playthroughs don't get messed up. So in the N64 version, you could RBA a bottle over a hookshot slot, never get the hookshot, and then win the race once and get a heart? Yep. Fun. And I believe that's actually done in 100% speedruns. Although that route is <laughs> so strange now. <laughs> yeah. That route. It's a route. Yeah, beyond comprehension. So, things that we're still looking out for in this seed, uh, we still need magic, we still need a bow, and we still need light arrows. And it would be nice to, like, actually, uh, get, like, bombs at some point. So next, uh, we can go off to Dodongo's Cavern. This is just up Death Mountain Trail here. Uh, you can do Dodongo's Cavern as either Child or Adult Link, um, but it's significantly faster to do the whole thing as Adult Link, uh, just because Adult Link can kind of cheese a bunch of the puzzles in ways that Child Link can't. And there's also no giant boulder blocking the entrance as adults, so we can just walk in right away anyway. Pick up some rocks first, because that's what you normally do. That's 
a switch over here. And this switch opens up a door on the other side of the room, but I'm actually going to be going this way first, because there is a Deku scrub located all the way back here. That's, we would like to purchase an item from. Another gold Scotula token. And I'm gonna save warp just because I don't really want to feel like fighting some Lazalfos right now. Uh, there are two more Scotulas on that side of the dungeon on the first floor that I can also get. I think actually, because I don't have hover boots, uh, they working there might have technically been the slower option. Also, I just realized I have the hammer, so I don't know why I was using bomb shoes earlier. Because it just feels good. It feels right. It does feel good to use bomb shoes. Uh, for this one, though, I actually am going to have to use bomb shoes. I want to check what this is. That looks like more Deku nuts. So I think we can ignore that. And here we got money. Another blue rupee. Pay for all the other Deku scrubs that we're going to buy items from in Dodongo's Cavern. Now we can go to the other side, though. Alright, so first we got a Deku scrub here. Going to give us a larger bullet bag. Alright. We got the map chest. More Deku seeds. I guess I'm also missing um, any kind of boots currently, because I don't I, I don't have either the uh, iron boots or the hover boots. There's a really fun glitch you can do in OT 3D called hookshot jumping if you have the hookshots and either um, iron boots or hover boots, uh, which can help speed up a lot of areas. So we'll probably be seeing some of that uh, as we get a pair of boots that we can use. We also still don't have an ocarina, which we can get around technically. Uh, there's a glitch we can do called ocarina items, which if you've played the original game, you're probably familiar with it. Um, it doesn't work the exact same way in 3D. We can't just uh, straight up use it um, with a bottle. Oh, well, there's our long shot. Nice. A very good item that we can have. Let's see, can I reach this? I think so. Back up just a little bit. See what this is. I believe that's the Goron bracelet. Oh yeah, all right, well this room was loaded, so that's pretty good. Nice room. Get our first strength upgrade. But yeah, um, the way that I would do Ocarina items currently is I would have to either do quick draw Ocarina items or quick put away Ocarina items. And then I'd be able to play uh, any of the songs that I have. Actually, I can't check what songs I have because I don't have an Ocarina. Because obviously you're supposed to get the Ocarina before you have the ability to play any songs. So I think I might have collected a song that I didn't account for on the tracker, but I guess we'll see about that once we actually get an Ocarina. No, I, I think the you, second I think game is Castle more. Small Key, which is not useful. Excellent. I think it was just Saria's Song of Storms and Serenade. Right, I think that's correct. Check the bomb bag chest. Uh, as Adult Link, we can just kind of jump over to where the bomb bag chest is. We don't have to go through any of like the slingshot puzzles or anything. And this is part of the reason... Oh, okay, speaking of ocarinas... <laughs> wow. Uh, 
DC. This is a very loaded Dodongo yeah, Tavern. DC really coming in close. Is this the other Ocarina? Oh, oh my God. No, actually, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> so Dodongo's Cavern was definitely where we wanted to come to right now. All right. I'm exploding. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, let's see. I guess we still technically need um, we still need a bow, magic, and light arrows if we want to beat the game. So we didn't really make any progress on either of those fronts, but we now have the tools to check uh, quite a lot of the rest of the game. Oh, and there's Nocturne of Shadow. All right, so interesting fact about the Nocturne of Shadow is that we can technically beat the game now uh, that we found Nocturne of Shadow, because there's actually a somewhat complicated wrong warp you can do, um, but we would like to actually try to beat the seed the way you, like, normally would win a randomizer by collecting all six medallions and getting the Ganon's Castle boss key, so... Uh, the only reason I'd be using the wrong warp to the final boss is if somehow I was not able to complete the seed using that method. All right, so we found, what, five big items in Dodongo's Cavern so far? Does anyone have predictions on what the uh, Sculptula in the back's gonna be? If it's gonna keep up the trend of necessary items? I think it's the, uh... I think it's the Bolero of Fire. Bolero of Fire, all right. Game stable? Hmm. I think it's gonna be... I think it's going to be a bottle. Right. Even though I know you already have one. Right, I mean, more bottles is always good. Now, it's actually just a bomb drop. If you squint, it's the blare of a fire. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that doesn't stay down. Oh, yeah, no ground jumps. Yeah, so uh, one of the other things that you can't do in OT3D, at least you can't do easily, um, is a ground jump. There are still technically ways that you can do ground jumps, but they're not very easy to set up. So they're not useful for most practical purposes. Oh my god, the block push. Also, yes, the randomizer does uh, speed up all of the block... Well, not actually not all of the block pushing, but a significant number of the block pushing. I'm sure Game Stable has interesting things he could say about what he had to go through to get the block pushing to work. Jim, um, it's uh, actually not too bad. Um, right before that game table, sorry. Uh, Jim, if it's all right with you, we could take the first break after you beat King Dodongo. Ah, uh, yep, that sounds good to sure. me. And sorry, game table, go ahead. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, the funny thing about the blocks is they actually do move a little bit faster just because of the frame rate. They move they accelerate and move the same amount per frame as OT randomizer, but since the frame rate uh, is greater, that means they actually move faster overall. Just a little fun fact, I guess. I'm, I love these knowledge drops, Games Table. It's, it's great. So King Dodongo is not a very hard boss, so he was defeated pretty easily. Uh, interesting thing is that as Adult Link in this game, um, you can actually just, like, hold out a bomb above your head and walk into King Dodongo and he'll just eat it up uh, because of how high Adult Link stands. So that means you can also defeat King Dodongo pretty easily, even if you just have bomb chews, uh, which is pretty cool. Is Dodongo's Cavern done? We'll see what the uh, the reward is, and then we'll we'll kick to the first break. The Shadow Medallion. All right. Very nice. So, if you want to give a countdown to pause the timer. Uh, yep. Uh, three, two, one, pause. Awesome, gamers. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back with more Ocarina of Time 3D randomizer, more gymnast, more games table, more challenger approaching. I'm just going to give you a, a, an opportunity here to just get up, stretch your legs, get some water, and we'll be right back with more GDQ Hotfix right after this.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. I hope you enjoyed your break. We're back with Challenger Approaching. As always, I'm Adef, your host. We'll be back with more Ocarina of Time Randomizer in just a second, but a quick announcement. Information on all of our Hot Fix shows is available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. And from there, you can find out more information about submitting your runs to any of our weekly shows. If you think you fit the bill, uh, please let us know. And uh, with that, Jim, you can uh, give a countdown whenever you're ready and sort of re-explain what's going on here. All right, excellent. So, uh, yeah, we can we can unpause the timer again in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, so we just beat Denongo's Cavern, and we got to the Shadow Medallion for doing so. Um, we got quite a few items in Dodongo's Cavern. We got uh, a bomb bag, we got an ocarina, um, we got the long shot, and we got the Goron bracelet. So it was an extremely good haul for us to go and do that. Uh, next, I believe we're going to go do Goron City and Fire Temple related things, since we do have the Megaton Hammer, and we currently have... Actually, we don't have any Fire Temple small keys, so we actually won't be able to do very much, but I still want to go this way anyway, just to get all the checks that we have over here. And yeah, and for anyone just joining in, uh, this is uh, the Ocarina of Time 3D randomizer, so if you've seen a, a, you know, an Ocarina of Time randomizer, it's pretty similar. Um, and this is a no-logic run, uh, to be more precise, so there is no logic to item placement, so anything can be anywhere. Um, and Games Table, if you'd like to, you know, piggyback off that. Oh, I was just gonna ask, Jim, did you get the Song of Storms earlier? I'm trying to remember. Oh, yes, I did. That's actually a very good point. Uh, there is, in fact, a Song of Storms grotto uh, just outside Goron City that I will want to go check. Do I get the skull sword real quick? Yeah, thank you for reminding me about that. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's an ice trap, then I'm not gonna like you. Oh my gosh. Oh, we haven't seen any ice traps yet. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there actually aren't that many in the pool. I think there are only like eight. Uh, with the current settings, so... Makes sense that we might have not seen any yet. Yeah, so there's a bunch of grottos around the world that you can open up with the Song of Storms, like this one. Deku nuts. Right. Oh, actually, I'm gonna use this opportunity to get a fish. Yeah, so dungeon rewards are still dungeon rewards, uh, but the stones and medallions have been shuffled. Um, and then it is not shop sanity, it is not school sanity, except for within dungeons. That is correct. It is key sanity, though, in all aspects. Small keys and boss keys can be anywhere. Right. Alright, so because I have the long shot, uh, can do this to get up here. There is actually a grotto here uh, that has three scrub salesmen, so we get three things here. Very normal place for forest dwellers to live. Oh, there's the fire temple boss key. Alright. That's actually really means nice. We... Yeah, <laughs> it means that we can beat Volvagia now. And we also got the largest bullet bag upgrade. There are no more bullet bags in the item pool. So I take it that uh, if you, like for example, same way how if you pick up where you got the long shot without getting the hook shot, you would get the hook shot, and then the next one would be the long shot. I assume it works the same for like bomb bag and bullet bag upgrades. Yeah, that's correct. So the uh, bomb bags, the bullet bags, uh, the bows, the slingshots, um, well, I guess that is the bullet bag, but um, all of those things are what we call progressive items, which means that no matter which one you get first, it's always going to be the first or like the lowest upgrade of all the possible upgrades. And then the second one you get is going to build off of that one, and then the final one you get is going to be the biggest one, regardless of the order that you collected them in. Right, because obviously if they're if they're both in like you know set locations then 
getting the biggest upgrade first might be a bit of a problem, because then if you get the smaller one, you're permanently downgraded, which would not be very right. good. Uh, right here, I'm going to do a trick called a hookshot clip to get in here to the Fire Temple boss key chest. All for that sweet, sweet Skulltula token, and then I can save warp to get back out. Uh, hookshot clipping is a very useful technique in this game that... Uh, it's not used, or like, we haven't seen a lot of it yet, but we may see a lot of it later on. And then we can go around the uh, boss key loop here. I guess I didn't actually need to do that hookshot clip, because I could have just gone around the boss key loop, but... Oh well. Is that door... Hookshot clipping is cool. Is that door not typically a locked door? Uh, no, so that's what I was talking about earlier, like, I think half an hour ago with, um... The fact that we removed one of the locked doors so that players uh, could not accidentally key lock themselves out okay. of being able to beat their seed if they had to beat the fire temple. Um, because before this, the door we just came through and the other locked door in the dungeon, there's only a single chest, right? Which means that there's only one opportunity to give the player a small key. Uh, which means that, uh, like... If, like, there's no logical way to make sure that players can't logically lock themselves out of their seed if you have both of the locked doors there, and the small keys are, like, limited to only being in the fire temple, for instance. Right. So, as a solution to that, that locked door is now gone. And the reason that's not a problem in the base game is because the base game can rightfully assume that you're not going to have the Megaton Hammer the first time you come into this dungeon. Right. Oh, man. Flare Dancer got me. They didn't really think Bottle on B was going to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> How dare they not take glitches into account for their game? No. Foolish, truly. <laughs> I mean, BA is so easy to understand, so I just don't understand. I don't get it. Oh, Ooh. all right. That's a very nice thing to get. Uh, having magic means that we can also now use Ferrari's Wind. Uh, that we got a very long time ago. So I guess we're opening this up because I don't want to go around the other way. We're going to leave the Goron here, though. He can get himself out at this point. <laughs> he does. If yeah. you leave, he does go. All right, so we do not have any small keys, which means we can't progress through the other side. Uh, but that's fine. We do actually have the boss key that we just got back in Goron City, so we can, in fact, defeat Volvagia. But there is one chest we can get here first. Now, another GTG key. I would have laughed if that was a Fire Temple small key. <laughs> oh, does this not reach? I guess not. You can actually jump uh, from this platform to the upper portion right here. Uh, actually, yeah, just go fight Volvagia. Uh, even without the hover boots or going all the way up to the top of the fire temple to hit down the platform. So that's very good. Alright, so Volvagia actually has an interesting strategy we can use. Um, there's actually two Volvagias that are like. Uh, in this boss fight. There's the one that flies around, and then there's the one that pops up out of the holes. Um, so the one that flies around is actually in this hole in front of us, so I'm actually just going to use Bomb Shoes to uh, deal damage to that Volvagia right now, and then also stun this one quickly so that it doesn't try to breathe fire at us while we're doing this. Hit it nine times, and that should be enough to then just kill Volvagia with one jump slash right here. Yep. All right. An interesting... So that makes the fight a lot quicker. An interesting side effect of that, too, is that... And I don't really know if... And Jim, you can let me know if weird shotting is a capability in OOT3D. Uh, not really, no. But in normal OOT, you can weird shot with a bow, and you can, without even activating the boss fight, just kill Volvagia from below. And then when right. you activate the boss fight, she has effectively zero health. There's a similar sort of effect in OOT3D randomizer specifically because of the ISG effect where it hits everything. 
Um, you can just kind of get ISG before the fight and just hang ar- hang out for a couple seconds. And then when you start the fight, Volvagio will have no health. <laughs> that is wonderful. <laughs> So it looks like the item that would have been up there is not particularly useful. Alright, so I'm trying to think about what we want to do next. I guess we could go to Forest Temple, because we do have Saria's song, so we can get past Mido uh, in the Lost Woods. Again, we didn't have any Fire Temple small keys, so we couldn't progress any farther through Fire Temple. Even if we didn't have Saria's Song or an Ocarina, there uh, are a couple other ways we can get around Mido. Uh, the backflip method that you might be familiar with in the original game doesn't work here, uh, so that's not something that we would do. But we do have the options of, say, uh, there's a glitch we can do called Ledge Cancel, which allows us to walk through uh, pretty much any actors. Um, we can also do a hookshot jump to, unlo- to get to an unloaded part of Lost Woods and not have to worry about Mido being in the way. Or we could also just straight up hover over him if we wanted to. Yes, wait, you never see that setup anymore in normal OT. I'm very happy to see that. <laughs> well, yeah, we don't have ground jumping, so. Unless you're playing, like, glitchless, I guess. Yeah, I feel like they would have to do that in glitchless. Yeah, that's a cool jump that we get to see. The Deku Tree Compass? Oh, finally. <laughs> There is that one check left in Deku Tree that you weren't able to get when you were there. That is true. There is one Skulltula that we weren't able to get in Deku Tree. Oh, another compass? Yo! Man, we're getting so many compasses. This is great. <laughs> so where are the other medallions, Jim? Uh, so the other medallions are going to be at the end of Jabu Jabu's belly and at the end of Shadow Temple. Uh, we still don't have the Shadow Temple boss key. Um, you can technically do a boss key skip. Also, I need to remember to save here. Uh, in Shadow Temple, but it's not one that I I don't think anybody has really practiced with at all. Okay. Did you just unbuffer so that? There's... Uh, yeah, there's a trick that we can do here to interrupt this cutscene um, that I want to try to do. I don't have the bow, so I'm not going to be able to progress too far into Forest Temple. I just wanted to come here and see uh, what all I could do. I thought you got it unbuffered first try, and I was about to scream. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I like right as I entered the door, I was like, uh oh, wait, I need to save here to make sure that like I can actually try this again. OT 3D players love to do this trick unbuffered. I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I do it unbuffered. I, I do it when I, on N64 unbuffered, too. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, that's the thing, though, right? Is, like, I'm, I feel like I'm spoiled by 60 FPS games in the sense that, like, I'll let Jim do this first. Um, like, playing a game like Mega Man on NES or something, a frame-perfect trick takes so long to get down because, like, there's no buffering or anything, and it's so hard. And then I go to OT and I'm like, oh, I have four million hours to do a frame perfect trick. Great. I'll just pause buffer it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like a frame late on this one. I could actually be. Uh, uh, so like the um, the custom menu that we implemented in this game can actually be used to do like very easy frame perfect buffering. Uh, so. <laughs> I mean, it's been a while since I've done this trick in general, so I don't think I would be able to get it right away just uh, just by doing that. But it would make things easier just due to the uh, like input delay that the menu has itself. Although it's a little bit difficult with the button that I have the menu set to. I currently have the button set to the select menu. Oh, yeah, that's uh, annoying which... for the buffering. Yeah, because the select menu will actually, um, or having select map to the menu means that I'm going to pause to be prompted for a save uh, right as I come out here, as I try to use it. But I can, oh, actually, I think my, 
Hold on. Yeah, okay. My bottle was still on the touch screen button, which means I can't really get that to work. I'll try that again. Yeah, so it just makes the buffering with the in-game menu a little bit more annoying. And the, the purpose of the trick that we're trying to do here is I'm trying to catch this fish back in my bottle um, right as the cutscene of these four pose starts so that I can then cancel the cutscene early and get down into the elevator before it uh, tries to lock itself into the ground. I should also probably save with the fish actually on the X or Y button. There we go. By the way, Jim, um, I was just wondering if I... If at some point I notice you miss, like, a check, do you want me to, like, yell at you to do it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much just yell at me. Oh, yeah, because I missed the Song of Storms Grotto again, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Outside of Forest Temple. <laughs> the Song of Storms Grotto. I also think you never did Kakariko Archery. Uh, oh, well, I can't do Kakariko Archery um, because I do not have the bow. That is... I'm pretty sure we need the bow to No, do you only need the no. bow to do the Gerudo Training Grounds archery. Or the Gerudo Fortress archery. Oh. Same as the uh, Castle Town slingshot, you can do CAC without bow. Well, right, yeah. I know you can do the slingshot one without the slingshot. Hmm. I, f I feel like I have a very distinct memory of putting, uh, like of having the bow necessary for logic to be able to unlock that check, but maybe I'm just crazy. I could be I wrong. Think we can try it next time we go back to CAC. I think maybe in the base game, if you don't have a quiver yet when you play it, it just gives you a purple rupee. So I, that's that might be what you're thinking of. Maybe. This is taking me way too many attempts. Significantly more than it really should. Hundred percent world record holder. <laughs> yeah, I do have the one hundred percent world record in this game. Although, I mean, hardly anyone like currently speed runs this game, so not particularly surprising. Wayfaring Fox. I'm always you... going way too late. I need to be going like earlier when trying to buffer the bottle input here. Wayfaring Fox says you do need it. Uh, I always do it with before the bow, and it, maybe OTR requires you to have the bow. I, I always do it without having the bow first in my playthroughs of this randomizer, at least. Or I'm just having, like, the Mandela effect right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I've definitely heard it before from people that are like, oh yeah, you don't need the bow to do that. I'm just like, I, I don't know, I, I feel like you do. This time, I'm going to use the bottle earlier. All right, there hey. we go. Now, yeah, so we caught the fish at the same time that the cutscene started. Now the cutscene is going to end very quickly, and I can successfully get myself onto the elevator before it goes down. And so now this gets me uh, two additional checks down here in the Forest Temple basement. Three push block once. There's the Skull up here. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. All right. So it was useful to do this <laughs> because we got the mirror shield. And then also a blue rupee. And we can make Link look all red. This is the real purpose for the mirror shield. Oh, yeah. Having the color coordination between Link. Uh, important question for both of you. Favorite tunic? Zora. Same. Game stable. Sorry, what? What's your favorite tunic? Um, I think it's Goron tunic. A, a, f a fine mm. choice. I. This is not a strong opinion, though. <laughs> <laughs> Something people don't say on the internet enough. <laughs> right. Get rid of the Stalfos. Uh, so without the bow, and also without uh, some boots that I could have hookshot jumped with, there's not 
a whole lot more of Forest Temple that I can currently do. Um, but I guess coming in here to get the Mirror Shield was pretty good. Yeah, so I can't go through the other door, but I can go through this one. Even though I don't have the Song of Time, uh, I can just do a ledge clip on this Song of Time block right here. The classic is just rolling here for a thousand years. Eh, second try, I'll take it. And check the Skulltula that's up here. That looks like a bottle. Bottle with bugs. That's our second bottle. Ouch. <laughs> it was not quite what I intended. Don't you love do. Z-targeting? Well, I like it when I'm actually aiming at what I want to yes. hit. Yes. This is normally the map chest. Today it's going to give us a purple rupee, which is effectively nothing because we already have a full wallet. So now we can lower the well water. I believe this is the last check. Actually, no, wait, I forgot. There's a sculpture over here and a chest over here. A red rupee that is also useless. Use the long shot to get to this chest over here. This chest has Deku nuts. You can also, I don't know if you know about this, you can hook shot jump to the door up there to enter the uh, checkerboard room and get the chest in there. Right, that is true. I just, uh, it's just that I unfortunately still don't have any boots. Oh, right. Yep, never mind. So I can't do hook shot jumps, but yeah. And that's 29 Sculptula tokens. All right, should probably update the tracker since the tracker still says 18. There we go. All right, so now we'll exit Forest Temple. Uh, it's also mysteriously daytime right now, even though it wasn't daytime when we went in here. For some reason, entering uh, vanilla forest temple in this game will just set the time of day to noon for some reason. Um, not Master yeah, Quest, so though. Now it's, yeah, not on Master Quest, though. <laughs> what? Vanilla. Ah, 30 tokens. All right. Now that we have 30 tokens, I'm going to go get the 30 token reward that we can get from the House of Skulltula. And then I can also use this opportunity to get the um, hidden grotto in Kakariko that has the rebuild. All right. You can also find out if we're wrong about archery if you want. <laughs> ah, yeah, that too. <laughs> also, now that we do have the hook shot, I also realized that. Uh, there are two more chests I can get in Ganon's tower now. Uh, in the spirit trial, which I could I could have also technically gotten before I had the hook shot, but it would have required doing a very dumb trick that I don't think I've ever gotten even once. All right, so let's see who's correct about archery here. <laughs> I bet I'm wrong. I'm very confident. <laughs> Oh, no, looks like we can play at least. I think Games Tabled is right that the reward is different if you don't have an, uh, a quiver yet. In the base, well, yeah, in the base game, that makes sense. I don't, I don't know if we changed that for the randomizer, though. I don't remember ever doing something like that. I feel like I have a pretty distinct memory of doing that. Okay, yeah, yeah. so it looks like Games Tabled did change it. check the house. So this is the last Skulltula reward we can get. Um, I purposely excluded the um, 
the 40 and 50 Skeletal Reward locations, just because I knew they would take a really long time to eventually get to. And in the interest of time, uh, I wanted to make sure that this seed hopefully would not take more than five hours. Though at its current pace, um, we're looking pretty good on that front, considering how loaded Denango's Cavern was. Just need the, the bow and some light arrows. The bows, some light arrows. Uh, the Shadow Temple boss. Hey, nice. nice. Also needed that. Uh, we also do need Zelda's lullaby if we want to uh, get past Shadow Temple. Uh, to, like, make the boat start moving, basically. That is a song we're still on the lookout for as well. All right, so now that I have bombs, um... Have you gotten that grotto right there by Kek? By that tree? Uh, that'll, that has a sculpture in it, so oh, it's right. not going to be one that's randomized. I guess we're doing a fess. I was trying to do a hess, but this works too. Uh, I think we're going to tackle Gerudo Fortress next. As well as the uh, three checks that we can get in Gerudo Valley, because we can get the chest behind the hammer rocks and also the uh, uh, chest in the Storm's Grotto. Did I see you? Or not the chest, but the two business sales. Did I see you just casually switch between ESS left down and ESS right down? Ah, yes. ESS switching isn't particularly hard in 3D. Okay. <laughs> it's significantly easier than VC Ocarina. Okay, I was I, I was astounded much. that you were just doing <laughs> that for fun. <laughs> so I'm glad to know that it's easier. I'm kind of SMHing right now that you didn't hit a Pona, even though you have a Pona song. I do? Don't you? Oh, no, sorry. I'm sorry is song. Bad. Oh, I'm SMHing right now at you, Games Table. I'm SM. <laughs> I'm Sing. I'm. I'm SMHing too. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to like say something funny, but <laughs> I just confused myself. It's okay, buddy. Sing my H. Yeah. See that? Has, yeah. All right. <laughs> So actually, it gets it's over here, or I'd be on the other side of the tent. Grotto's on one of these corners. I think okay, it's, it's just one over here. I could have sworn it's like right there, like right in the middle. There it is. Oh. SMHing at game stable again. <laughs> Dude, what an SMH target, my man. Another compass, nice, nice. Oh man. Wow. Man is literally selling money. You know me, notorious for not knowing anything about OOT. I mean, yeah, you spent, <laughs> you deleted all your OOT knowledge to fill it with Shabam knowledge, which I am grateful for, let me be very clear. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're proper speed link. All right, so uh, the Gerudo Fortress setting that we're using is fast Gerudo Fortress. Uh, this means that there's only one carpenter that we need to rescue before we can get the Gerudo token. Uh, so we don't have to go through the entire fortress rescuing uh, all four carpenters. Oh man. This guard is good. Normally this fight doesn't take this long, but these are very strange attack patterns that she's giving me. There we go. And this key is also just vanilla currently, so... Not too surprising that we got the fortress key there. I feel like if you have the mirror shield, they should just, like... Be like, oh wow, you, uh, must be important. Here's the key. You've, you've already conquered the spirit temple. I like that fight in OOT3D because it's it feels more skill-based than 
the fight in OT, which is like, all right, get behind the torch and just do your thing. Oh, yeah. Or get ISG <laughs> and do your thing. Whereas Jim was like actually sword fighting with someone. All right, so... Jim, you have so many keys. I have four keys, yeah. Wow, that's a lot of keys. However, I am prepared to just not use any of them because we have the power of hookshot clipping that we can use to get through just about anything here. Uh, so we're gonna hookshot clip to get all these chests. Uh, I guess we're gonna this way next. We can't get everything in Druido Training Grounds right now um, because we also don't have the bow. We did get the first Fire Temple small key though, so that's pretty good. Also, I don't know why I hookshot clipped for this one because I could have just walked around for I it. I bet it was actually marginally faster. Probably. So we did just get the Ocarina of Time, but in Randomizer, the Ocarina of Time uh, basically does not do anything. So, uh, not a particularly useful find. Is, also, is the know. static small key in the room to your left randomized? Uh, yes, that is randomized. There's actually well, some lore to that question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got the minuet. All right, that's pretty good. Until more recent release of this randomizer, that key was actually not randomized because it could cause a crash. What was the solution? Um, so the solution... <laughs> so basically <laughs> it has something to do with if there's like a um like a model loaded that's not normally in that room and then you try to like use a door to exit the room the game will end up crashing depending on what model was loaded so the strategy that is now used is that whenever link opens the door uh the randomizer hurries up and unloads all of the models that it made as fast as possible <laughs> before the game has a chance to crash. <laughs> and it seems to work. Well, that's excellent. All right, so we'll go back and check small key or the other freestanding item, whatever it might be. Oh, it was a dungeon map. I didn't see what it was at first and got very confused. It like blended in with the floor. But this is good. Now I know where all the rooms are in Jabu, so we'll be good to go when we finally go back there. Shoutouts to this room for being the only known use of SRM in OT 3D. <laughs> yeah. You want to get early explosives as Child Link. Right, now we go to the other side of the dungeon. There are two chests that you can make spawn in this first room, but again, they require the bow, which we don't have yet, so... They're not chests that we'll be able to get until we find one of those. So regarding the bow, uh, because the bow is a progressive item, or rather the quivers that you can get are progressive items, there's actually three different um, bows that we can essentially get in the pool um, as our first bow, but we haven't found any of them yet. And for all we know, they could all be behind the checks that normally require the bow. <laughs> so I'm getting absolutely wrecked. He jumped on the rock. He's step close right here. Thing turns around so slowly in the sand. Yeah, obviously this what makes this fight hard is Link being in the sand. I got a silver rupee room. You actually can um, complete this room without uh, using the hook shot at all. It's just uh, a little bit difficult, but thankfully I do have the long shot, so it's. But I still ran into the fire anyway. Also, nice, nice miss. <laughs> I swear I played this game before. You can't fool me, Jim. You never played this. So 
there's four wolfos we have to defeat in this room. That will spawn a chest for us. I'm unfortunately not going to be able to get past that silver block, um, because I don't have silver gauntlets, and I also don't have uh, hover boots either. If I had hover boots, I'd be able to do a trick called a hover boost to get past it. But... And it would be good to do that, because there are four chests behind there. I bet you could technically do like a like a hover where you angle change with a bomb chew and then like draw a sword to cancel ISG to grab the ledge or something. But... Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> but I've never tried something like that before. Yeah, I don't even know if it would actually work. Well, the MM chew hovering would actually make it not that bad. Yeah, that's true. It would be easy to just, like, gain height with the hovering. And I do have... Oh, I actually only have 11 shoes right now. I don't think it's worth doing this on the fly. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised oh, if, so it, if, it, even if it was possible, if there was, like, only, like, a precise place that you could actually grab the ledge. Yeah. So for this chest, uh, we can actually get it by just rolling into it with damage invincibility. Uh, just a... For another fire temple key. And this just leads back to this room, so yeah, there's not much we can do here anymore. So we were able to get most of the things here, uh, thanks to our ability to hookshot clip through pretty much anything, so that was very good. Yeah, I, I can go to Spirit Temple right now, actually. I can begin checking stuff in there. But I do have the long shot, so I can cross the Haunted Wasteland. Thing. Just have to talk to the guard up here to open the gate for me. Now, if I had hover boots or iron boots, I'd be able to hookshot jump over it, but none of those yet. Maybe we'll find them in Spirit Temple. So let's see, how many Spirit Keys do we have? We have... we only have one Spirit Temple small key, I think. I'll still be able to get into the main room of Spirit Temple with that, so there's still quite a bit we should be able to. For the River of Sand, we can just use the long shot. We'll just have to navigate uh, the haunted wasteland at night. Uh, there is a chest in the haunted wasteland, but because I can't make fire, like I don't have Din's fire or um, fire arrows or a bow currently, so I can't light those torches to make the chest appear, unfortunately. Well... You could do quick put well, away. <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever used quick put away to actually like create uh, fire on a fire source before, though. So there's a setup in that room in normal OT. I don't know about OT 3D though. It's kind of weird being in this post quick put away world because it, like, it's a, it's a very useful trick, but it still just kind of feels like a joke. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah yeah you know hammer you know maybe we need it but all right we've reached desert colossus and that is a rock that i cannot roll with Can we get any view on what is up on the arch? It is a heart piece. All right, so we do not need that. Game's tabled. What's up? Can you make... You know how you can get big Gways and big style children? Mm-hmm. Can you have big Shabams? <laughs> you could. Just, uh... <laughs> yeah, in their, in their memory, you just set how big they are. All right. I can sleep soundly tonight. That would be a totally feasible modification. <laughs> yeah.
You get right on that, okay? Why don't they just put a shabam in the chest? Now this... <laughs> this is shabam This is big. Trip. <laughs> <laughs> Take 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 I forgot that I couldn't get past the silver block in the first room without gauntlets or hover boots. The same reason I couldn't get past it in uh, Gerudo Training Grounds. I'm trying to think about what else we can do. I guess... Um, I technically could go into Shadow Temple um, right now and just... Uh, there's a way that I can do what's called a bonk hookshot jump to get into Shadow Temple, or I guess I could just hover up into Shadow Temple, but... Um, normally I would need Din's Fire to open up the pathway to Shadow Temple, but uh, if I can get out of bounds up onto, like... Uh, the collision on the outside of this area, then I would be able to just side hop into Shadow Temple pretty much. So I'm gonna try to do that. It's been a little bit since I've done this bonk hookshot clip. Or not hookshot clip, bonk, bonk hookshot jump. Okay. Or how to do this here. Right. There's a way that you can, um... Like, not have to time using the hook shot at all to do this. There we go. Okay. We're up. Alright. If you have a specific angle in doing it, so that's what I was able to do. But I do have to be careful here because I do not want to get hit off or go too far out of bounds to where there's no collision. Wow, you could just walk on this seam no problem in 3D. Uh, oh, it's, yeah, it's not even a seam, it's just a floor, basically. Alright, so now the area down here is unloaded. Gets into the Shadow Temple. Alright, so now we can go get the checks back here. So we first got the map chest, which is over here. Uh, obviously, I don't have the Lens of Truth, but I know where everything is, so that's not a huge deal. Oh, goodness. I tried to do a jump slash there, but I didn't have my sword out in time. What the heck? And then it will go on to check the Hover Boots chest also. Uh, I'm not going to be able to complete Shadow Temple right now again, uh, because I do not have Zelda's Lullaby, so I'm not going to be able to make the boat move at the end. I didn't get the Fire Temple Compass, though. You're doing great on compasses. I am. Like, let's... Actually, I don't know if there's a way we can check how many compasses we have. I don't think there is. You have to go into each dungeon to check, but yeah. Ow. I didn't really want to do that. Just wanted to trigger Dead Hands. So by backflipping into these hands, um, the hands will immediately let go of Link, and then I can just uh, immediately go over to where Dead Hand is without having to try to wiggle my way out of the hands grip. Thankfully, Dead Hand spawned in like very nice locations for me. More bomb shoes. All right. They are just telling you to hover past the boat. <laughs> I don't think that's possible. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. According to what I've heard, unfortunately. I mean, I could always do boat skip via death hole void warp, but uh, I don't yeah. know if we want to set that up. <laughs> All right, so the truth spinner here is actually going to be pretty annoying because I don't have hover boots. It'll be first try. It's fine. Uh, Oh, hopefully, yeah. I mean, it's always pull, so you're good. Well, not if you let go. <laughs> All I did was L target. All right, I guess we're checking the back one first. Oh, darn it. It was pull, 100%.
I hate how it doesn't count if you just, like, interrupt the animation. Yeah, that's pretty silly. So yeah, currently to beat Ganon, I still need, um... Every time. I still need the bow. Yeah. <laughs> I still need the bow and uh, some light arrows, as well as Zelda's lullaby to beat Shadow Temple. Casual distance mega. Oh wait, no, that was just a normal mega flip. Ignore me. Yeah, that was just a regular mega flip. That bomb to explode. It screamed on mid jump slash. The rarely seen Gibdo ability to freeze time. <laughs> uh, the statue puzzle in Shadow Temple is only ever one of the back three. Ooh. That's nice. Uh, and I think it's it's very... most likely to be the first one, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong about that. Oh yeah, I think there is like some variance in the RNG for which one gets chosen. I think it's like 36, it's like a small percent change between the three of them, but the first one is the most likely. All right, so fun fact, um, in OOT3D, uh, there is just a random pot with a fairy in it right here. For some reason. Pot is not in the original game. So right, actually, I don't know what long shot. Trick I'm to do. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I have the long shot. I can just long shot clip out to here. But yeah, there's a trick you can do with a bomb there to get through that corner. Here, I can use the long shot to check the Scotia. Money that I can't use, so we'll collect it anyway. All right, so I'm going to save here. Uh, because I only have two Shadow Temple small keys, um, I'm going to open up this door from the backside using a small key, and then I'm going to check some of the items uh, in this area. Also, it's a nice roll. <laughs> and if none of the items in this area are useful, I'm just going to quit the game so that I can do what's called save scumming to preserve my key. Oh my goodness. The Gibdo is too powerful. Okay, a water temple key. That's probably something that we don't necessarily need. How many water temple keys do you have? That's a good question, though. Our container that's useless. We currently have... Okay, so with that one, we have three water temple keys. Uh, I do not think I can jump this gap, so... Pretty sure you can full clear water temple with only two keys, if you count save scumming. Right, yeah, that sounds correct. Uh, okay. Uh, that's way too close to the edge. I want to wait. And there's one more chest in here. So if this isn't useful, I'll just be quitting out now. Alright. This is not a useful check. So this means that um, I can at least make a little bit more progress here in Shadow Temple with attempting to get some more checks since I don't have to use a small key on that locked door or on the locked door that normally leads to that area. So it actually saves me from having to collect some more small keys. Oh, well. <laughs> I would hope that I would be able to line things up better, so let's try that again. Yeah, these mega flips that I'm doing are basically in the place of uh, where hover boots would normally be required. Because uh, I don't have the hover boots yet. I did, however, find the iron boots, which will make uh, some things a lot easier. I love long shot in yeah, this room. Oh, yeah. You can just skip this whole room uh, by doing the long shot clip. 
no Navi trigger there boggled my mind. All right, well, I clearly just wanted to show off this epic long shot clip again, in case you guys missed it the first time. Let's actually jump this gap. There we go. Yeah, man. Normally when I'd go through here, you know, you'd expect to have hover boots. Obviously, we do not have hover boots, so... So there's three checks we can get in here. There's a visible chest, an invisible chest, and also a sculpture. Sure, we rid of the like like first, though. We got a blue rupee. We got the prelude of light. Okay. And another blue rupee. And thankfully, the gates only have collision from one side, so we can just roll back out. So let's see. Uh, now we pretty much can just get the checks in the uh, stone umbrella room. That'll pretty much be it. Those jump it is kind of throwing me off. Yeah, it is kind of throwing me off a little bit not having uh, the hover boots here. But it must be done. Hard because why not? There's a chest in this cell, and then two chests up top. Thank you, nuts. Uh, we can use a backflip to just sort of clip up into um, the what the what the randomizer refers to as the stone umbrellas right there. That gets us up here pretty easily. It skips us having to push like uh, a block through the whole room. All right, so that's pretty much all we can do here. I mean, I guess I guess I could have tried save scumming through um, the next area, but. If I'd gotten something useful, then I could have potentially not been able to find another Shadow Temple key, which would have been bad. All right, now that we got the Iron Boots, though, um, we can definitely enter the Water Temple. So that's something that we can try and go do. I keep thinking of overworld sculptures and being like, oh, you can do that. <laughs> Actually, speaking of overworld things, I did forget to give the claim check to Big Goron. Mm. Could could you have bow behind fire arrows? Yep, that is a possibility, because no logic. That, that's horrible. That would be horrible, yeah. But there are three of them in the overworld somewhere. So. Kind of amazing for all the things you've gotten that you haven't gotten a single bow since there's three of them. Right. And I found all the slingshots so far, too. So I also don't have Zelda's lullaby, but I do have the ability to get this map chest right here. Yeah, one Ouch. one trick that does not work in OOT 3D that a lot of people might be familiar with from OOT 64 is uh, opening underwater chests with iron boots. It does not work. Yeah, so uh, like any chest that's currently underwater because of like the water temple's water level, I'm not going to be able to get. All right. Speaking of fire arrows, though. Hey, I talked about that a second ago. <laughs> they were summoned. But yeah, we did. We do have fire arrows. However, we can't use any because, you know, we don't have a quiver. Uh, so we still need to find the bow if we want to use the fire arrows. Uh, 
Uh, all right. Oh, I did just save. But... So I guess we could save scum for the uh, for the boss key chest now. For here. Because there's a uh, there's the boss key chest, and then there's a sculptula that uh, here. Getting to the sculpture requires one small key, and getting to the boss key chest requires two small keys. Uh, but actually, I guess to do this, I need to do a corner boost jump. Which I don't think I've ever actually done before, but I guess we can try it. Uh, if I could get over here. You could also hover it if you wanted to. And actually, I don't know about that. Actually, no, yeah, I, I could hover it if I wanted to. You gotta be wary Actually, of the I'm gonna try though. doing something weird. I'm gonna try luring the Tektite over here and using him to damage boost me. <laughs> Amazing. Hey, there you go. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout-outs to our boy, the Tektite. Blue Rupee. Don't let that trick go to waste. We gotta see something good here. Well, I mean, if it if it does go to waste, then we still we get our keys back. So. Hmm. Mm, I think you're obligated to do the other checks first, <laughs> and then maybe go yeah, back okay. for it. All right, so we're going to go check the other uh, chests that are behind uh, the two small keys. And if though if all of those checks are useless, then we'll come back and we'll get Requiem. Although there's one back here you can't get without bow. Or can you hover up from the dragon room? I'm actually not sure. Um, oh, that's a good question. I could probably hover up from the dragon room. I should be able to. Unless there's some weird property about using ISG above water, but I don't think there is. Gulchula. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> and you have the long shot, so you can get it from this side of the room. Yeah. <laughs> it was all calculated game stable. You gotta have faith. That's why I didn't say well, anything sooner. Ooh. Well, maybe you can't. Okay, you can get it from this platform. I'm not wrong. <laughs> Worth. Oh, 100%. Definitely. That gives Dark Link more health. Uh <laughs> I knew the whole time. Right, so there's actually a cool strat we can do here where we can uh, hook shut up to this last platform by using the iron boots down there. I was so confused when you went into the water, and now I'm just impressed, so. Because, <laughs> yeah, otherwise I would have had to gone around the room, like, the normal way. Uh, where, like, you hook shot over, over and over and over again. Hook shot dragons. Okay, I already have Deku Nuts equipped. Uh, Dark Link is not very difficult with Deku Nuts. Though, interestingly, you have to throw the Deku Nut, like, away from him. Uh, he just yeah. shields it if you throw it towards him. Also, yeah, Dark Link's health is based upon what Link's maximum health is when you fight him. Ah, okay. Well, you can trade a Shadow Temple Key for a Water Temple Key. Yeah, that's or for two Water Temple Keys. Uh, okay, wait, what was the setup for this? Something like this. Uh, you press A to open on the second frame of explosion, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. So here we're going to attempt to do something, a way to unload the Song of Time block at the back here, because I don't have Song of Time. 
looks correct. Yep, there we go. Alright, so the door is still open, the Song of Time block is gone, but I can use a hookshot clip getting back through the door and have the door closed, but now the Song of Time block is gone. Alright. So we at the very least have this Sculptula that we can check, which I'm gonna swim past it briefly just so we can get up on this platform. And the long shot just barely reaches. It's a purple rupee. Actually, wait, can I stand here? I guess not. Because if I could stand here, then I could just hook shot clip through. Actually, wait a minute. Oh, this is huge brain. I don't think this is going to work because I have to aim upwards. Yeah. So, like, the angle for this would not be good enough, because I can only aim, like, down here. I wanted to get up there. Unfortunately, it does not look like I'll be able to get up there. All right, well, I guess we'll... Uh, we'll ditch the Shadow Temple key for now. All right, but now we can actually do uh, some pretty fun stuff. Um, we don't have Zelda's Lullaby, so we can't make the water uh, go down like we mentioned earlier. However, we can get out of bounds and then get around to places that we might want to go to. Although, actually, I guess before we do that, I should check the compass chest, which just requires going this way. for me. I'm pretty sure you can just like roll into this and get it, but I've like never been able to do this. Uh, it's easier if you, you can like target the wall and then turn to the left so you have a perpendicular angle. Ah, that makes Could sense. be different in OC3D though, and I'm completely talking out of my ass, but who knows? This way, get back up to the top, and then we can start having some fun. Try to get rid of these tectites, that is. Alright, so using these, um, actually not this one. Using these hookshot targets, uh, I can do what's called a hookshot jump to get very high up into the air. A little bit tricky because of how high these are. There we go. Now we're way high up, and we can get pretty far out of bounds here. I'm gonna try and go get the one Sculptula that I can get down here by loading this hallway to load this part of the temple. And then recoil off of a wall somewhere. <laughs> I intend to recoil off of. And so normally you'd need to, like, blow up um, a floor on the lower level to get here, but by going out of bounds we can just load the, uh... We can load this room by going over the hallway and then swim over it. The Dodongo's Cavern Dungeon Map. Wow. <laughs> Save warp to get out of here. Let's see, so beating the Water Temple is not particularly important because beating the Water Temple is just going to give us the Kokiri Emerald, which is likely not required to beat this seed. We're just going to be checking as much as we can here. It would, well, you don't have the bow, but it would unlock the Fire Arrow check, right? Ah, uh, yes, that's correct. It would unlock the Fire Arrow check. There we go. Now we're gonna get down here. I can go down far enough. Oh. And 
this is the way to the dragon statue room. Alright, so I guess, how many bomb shoes do we have? 21. Yeah, we should be able to just make it up there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I've never done this hover, or a hover like this before. Or at least, like, in this specific location. But we'll try. We do want what's in that, or we might want what's in that chest. I don't know if it'll actually be useful. Oh, nice. Wow. Oh, this is not gonna... <laughs> go for it, go for it. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I have ISG anymore because the camera's... Yeah, the cutscene probably took it away from you. You, c yeah. you can't ever yeah. up there because <laughs> <laughs> you're always going to trigger the cutscene, I think. Yeah. Oh, because of ISG. I thought right, somehow... ISG is hitting everything with spherical collision. <laughs> I thought somehow that the bomb you threw went down there and I was like, what, a what are the odds? And then I remembered bombs go away in the water anyway. <laughs> Well, at least we can still get this check. Just the sculpture token. Alright, I guess we should go get Requiem. Because um, then I can at least get to Spirit Temple as Child and potentially get some of those checks there. We'll go back to the boss key chest now. I'm pretty sure that's everything I can do here. The don't link for right now. You can kill Morpha. I don't think I have the boss key. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the water temple boss oh, okay. key. Okay, sorry. I wouldn't be able to get in there. I would be able to get in there if I had access to Bongo Bongo's room, but I don't have access to Zelda's lullaby, so that's something we're gonna be able to do either. Um, well, okay, now I get to do this damage boost again. We lure our tech type friend over here. Velma. Is that what we're calling the tech type? I guess. We already have <laughs> tech types yeah. named Shaggy and Scooby and Fred. Oh yeah, that's true. For a while, there, there was a trick in this game that we did called the Zoinks Hover, uh, because it involved doing a hover off of two tech types who we decided to name Shaggy and Scooby. Oh yeah, that was a thing. It wasn't a very fun hover, though. No one really liked it. And thankfully, it's not necessary anymore. Now that we got Requiem, I'm gonna play Prelude. I'm also going to hydrate, because it's been a while since I hydrated. Let's go hydration! No way, me too. No way, me three! And I think it's about time... Actually... I'm kind of curious to see, um... What's in Ganon's Castle Spirit Trial? Because that was the one place that I couldn't get some of the checks at the last time I did Ganon's Castle. And there's also one check in Shadow Trial that I wasn't able to get. Uh, since I did not have the hookshot last time. Also, for those of you who may have just come in, uh, I knew that Requiem was at the Water Temple boss key chest because of the fact that I saved Scum for it earlier, but wasn't sure if it was what was really important to get in Water Temple. So. Once we determined that it was probably the most valuable thing I could get, I went back and got it. And now we can go back in this castle. Our easy hovering. That, like, still, it makes me happy, but also makes me mad. <laughs> makes you mad because you know that in the original game you will never have it this <laughs> Correct. easy. Correct. I gotta pull out the hookshot every time. And use even more explosives. Yep. 
so Spirit Trial starts off with a bunch of silver rupees. Just temporarily. And then there's two chests in the next room. Uh, this is one of the only places in the original game that I believe you are completely intended to use bomb shoes, aside from like bomb shoe bowling, I guess. Um, normally that's what the game gives you here, but here it just gave us money to buy bomb shoes, so that's pretty cool. I can just hook shot clip through there. Peace of heart, oh boy. And then now I'm gonna go back to Shadow Trial. If I don't get anything good in Shadow Trial, um, I'm just going to quit the game because I saved after praying, after praying, saved after playing Prelude. Praying Prelude. Praying Prelude. <laughs> Look, English is hard sometimes. I don't know what to I don't know yet. why that's funny, but it is, so. <laughs> I guess I didn't get this chest earlier either. Who checks here? Yeah. Yo, the ice cavern. Oh my God! Thank right, God. We'll I was waiting so long for that one. We are now not going to get lost in ice cavern. Everybody can rejoice. Actually, can I get over here? Oh yeah, I can. I can hover. <laughs> yeah, of course. Ah, uh, actually, wait. Do I still need to hover? I think I still need to hover. <laughs> I don't want to say you can mega side hop that, but I feel like you can mega side hop that. But you should hover. Oh, yeah, you probably could. Oh, well, that's not what we wanted to have happen. <laughs> you honestly almost made it. <laughs> yeah, I did almost make it. Wait, you can even side hop hover? Uh, I know you can as child. Maybe the I, I probably just messed up the timing because I've never actually done the side hop hovering before. Oh, something's getting hit every frame. It was the bubble. <laughs> oh yeah, huh? All right, so how many hovers is this? Like two and then a backflip, probably. You can always check with the long shot. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, now I can just quit because we didn't get anything useful. Which unfortunately means I did have to throw away the ice cavern map. Jim, Darn. what are you doing? I'm saving us a little bit of time. I don't understand. You know, you what haven't that been means. there yet. You're gonna. That's true, I have not been to ice cavern yet. Actually, I could get into ice cavern now, though. Even though I don't have Zelda's lullaby. Oh, I don't think you did the lab dive reward, by the way. Oh, that's correct. I didn't do that. Oh, let's go to Spirit Temple as Child Link. Or actually, I guess before we do that, I could I could actually do bomb shoe bowling now as Child. Unless it's nighttime, in which case, I don't know if I want to wait till daytime. I could also buy uh, the Keaton mask for the eventual mask trading sequence. Oh, it, it, okay, it's still technically nighttime, but I can just wait for like a few seconds in Hyrule Castle to make it daytime. Oh no, it is daytime. I, I guess I'm just confused. Never mind then. No, it, I also totally thought it was nighttime. All right. What can we win from Bomb Shoe Bowling? Ooh, we have a key. All right. It's right, so a bit of an interesting strategy here with Bomb Shoe Bowling. I'm actually going to let this Bomb Shoe damage me, and then this gives us the perfect angle to just ride the Bomb Shoe, or to place the Bomb Shoe down and have it ride along the wall for both of these uh, last two parts. So, makes it very easy. You don't have to worry about the cucko RNG in the middle. And 
and we get... Okay, well, there's the Shadow Temple key. <laughs> and then a blue rupee. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, so there are several different rewards still in Rando. Yeah, the first two rewards are randomized, but after that, they're uh, not randomized anymore. Okay. Oh, and I also didn't buy the mask. Or not buy the mask, but rent the mask. Doesn't actually cost any rupees to take the mask initially. It's very hard, at least for me, to like properly keep track of everything that I want to do. <laughs> Just because there's so many different things you can do in this game, at least in the randomizer. Okay. Now we can place uh, our Requiem. You also got so many items back to back very quickly. It's like the whole game kind of opened up. Yeah, that too. Like once the Nago's Cavern was done, it was like, oh, okay, well, what do we do now? There's <laughs> so much we can do. And yet we still don't have the bow. So we can go further into Spirit Temple now because um, Adult was not able to do uh, this side of Spirit Temple because Adult can't crawl through the crawl space, but we can. So I'm going to put on my uh, Hylian shield here so that I don't end up burning my Deku shield accidentally. Nice. Now all the enemies are gone. Uh, we can actually use a Deku stick to, uh, well, the one Deku stick I have, <laughs> to take fire from this room into this one and light these two torches, which is pretty cool. This actually has a piece of heart. Well, not a piece of heart, but a recovery heart. Using a bit of a precise shot here, we can hit the switch behind there without having to use like bomb shoes or anything. That was close. Another compass. Okay, good. Now I know where everything is in Shadow Temple. No. Oh, well. Pwned. <laughs> I got pwned. I'm gonna wait for the spike trap. Properly kill the Anubis with fire. And then get this check. Ah, another fire temple small key. I believe that means we can actually get through a pretty substantial portion of fire temple now. Because that gives us, yeah, three fire temple keys. Doesn't get us through the whole thing but it gets us through a pretty good part of the fire temple. Alright, now I guess, um, I guess I'll save Scum this in case there's nothing useful uh, behind the locked door that's over here, since again I only have one spirit temple key. Get this, we'll get this bomb drop and then save, so I actually have the bombs still. So should we get rid of Skulchula's? We'll check what that is once we get up there. Unless the camera lets us see it, but the camera doesn't quite let us see what it is. And it is. Ooh! Hmm. Valera? A, a red ocarina. Yeah, so that's the Valero of Fire. So that will be useful for getting back to Fire Temple, potentially. And hitting that switch makes two chests appear. Over here and this one. Right. And I can use a bomb shoe to light the sun here. I don't know if I can aim. Yeah, there we go.
Show me the light. I don't have Din's fire. Well, I actually have a Deku stick, so I can still get the map chest. I can use the Deku stick on the torch up here. I guess I can also check to see what this is. That is a huge rupee. We definitely do not need that. And I'll finish by going up the rest of the child side. Uh, there's two more checks that I can get here. Um, well, aside from this one right here. Uh, there's two more checks that I can get um, without another small key. If there's nothing up here, I wonder if it's worth it to ditch the bolero. Yeah, it probably would be worth it to just ditch Bolero, I think. Um, that jump was definitely intended. Be cool. Jim, when you uh, when you conclude your Spirit Temple checks here, you mind if we take our next break? Ah, uh, yeah, that can work out perfectly fine. So this lights the torch, and then you can use that torch to light the rest of it. Our one Deku stick that we can have, and then this is what'll actually make the chest here. Appear. Thank God you saw the Deku so stick. Convoluted. Yeah. <laughs> But then to actually clear the room and move on to the next room. Ooh, another fire temple key. That's potentially I pretty feel like good. It's, uh, yeah, it's probably worth it to keep going uh, with what we've got here. Not do the save scum. I mean, technically, with enough bomb shoes, we can do spirit hover as a doll. Well, you can do it now. You could, uh... Yeah, I could do it You now. can go from so iron true. gauntlets... Or, pardon me, Silver Gauntlets, Jesus. <laughs> silver Gauntlets <laughs> over to Mirror Shield, if you want. Oh, well, I mean, I can't get there because there's still a locked door in my way. Oh, yeah. Um, but, like, fr from the outside, I could hover all the way up from the bottom. Ah, uh, yeah, that too. Shoes. Another small key. Now, Forest Temple key. Yeah, but I think we'll keep these things. Um, Let's see, next. I wanted to go beat Jabu Jabu, that's what I wanted to do. Alright, so we can use the Serenade, and then we can use our Scale that we got all the way back at the beginning uh, to go into Zora's Domain after this next break. Sure, give the countdown whenever you're ready. Uh, three, two, one, pause. Alright, gamers, we're going to take a quick break so you can stretch your legs, get some water. We'll be right back with more Challenger approaching, more Gymnast 86 playing Ocarina of Time 3D Randomizer right after this. We could find one of the boss keys or small keys in, like, you know, a dungeon heart container or something. Oh, Jim, I think let's hold off for just one second. It seems like maybe there is a tech issue. Okay. So sorry, I did not see that in time. Okay, okay. <laughs> did, did they hear any of the intro? Okay, well, welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hotfix. <laughs> um... We played for only about 20 seconds. Um, apologies, we had a little tech mishap, but uh, welcome back to Challenger Approaching. I'll give the announcement I gave again. This Saturday, which is tomorrow, uh, technically today, feels weird I did this spiel already. <laughs> uh, we have Tina's RPG show, I guess, with Final Fantasy VII starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, so be sure not to miss that. That's on this channel on Saturday. And uh, we're back with more Gymnast, more Ocarina of Time 3D Randomizer. Jim, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Adef. Uh, is the timer still going? Uh, no. All right, so I will count us back in in three, two, one, go. All right, so now that we're back, uh, we just finished as much as we could do as Child Link in Spirit Temple. 
Uh, we managed to find the Bolero Fire and, I believe, two Fire Temple small keys, uh, which was very good. It means that we can do a lot more in Fire Temple than we could earlier. But before that, uh, we're going to go back to Jabu Jabu's Belly, now that we actually have the Boomerang and can complete it. Because at the end of Jabu Jabu's Belly, we will get the Fire Medallion as our dungeon reward. Uh, so once again, I have to do a triple slash clip here to get out of bounds and get past King Zora, because we have not found Rudo's letter in this playthrough at all. Uh, but it's not really that necessary. Uh, both Adult and Child Link can pretty easily get past King Zora, so... Not a big deal. Uh, however, I will have to not... Or actually, no, I can use my fish here. No, this oh, is a fish the fish that we scene. caught earlier. Let's go. <laughs> Please tell me, yes, you didn't take this cutscene out. Oh, it's blessed. I don't think we'll so... ever take this cutscene out because, at least in our playthroughs, we always skip this cutscene. He's just so can... hungry. <laughs> he just jump slash in. All right. So we were able to check most of Jabu Jabu's belly earlier. Um, there were a few chests that we were not able to get because, again, we didn't have the boomerang last time, so... That's what we were going to collect this time. So, the two of the chests that we weren't able to get were the map and compass chests in the depths of Jabu Jabu, so we'll have to go all the way back here. Uh, we're gonna pick up Princess Rudo again, uh, so we can put her down on a blue switch. We could technically skip picking her up, but that's not gonna save us very much time for a trick that's a little bit difficult, so bring her with us. Oh my god, Jim, the Shaboms are back. The Shaboms are back. I'm activated. Game Stable, Games. do you have any more? <laughs> <laughs> Game Stable has achieved his final form. <laughs> that was very funny to me. <laughs> Game Stable, why don't you hit us with another Shabomb factor too, please? So they uh, they do this thing where as they're bouncing around, they pick a random number. I want to say it's between one and ten, and then uh, based off if that number is high enough, the next time they hit a wall, they'll rebound from the wall slightly faster. Oh, thank you, Jim. This is. Wow. This is the perfect room for fun Shabomb facts. <laughs> Give us another one. Um, <laughs> dance, this, uh, <laughs> dance, games table, dance. There's this value in their memory that when they start to explode, they set that value to eight and then never do anything. It's completely <laughs> unclear what that value is supposed to be for. It doesn't do anything. It's just their favorite number. Can you blame them? I guess it's like their dying message. They set a number to eight. <laughs> Please eight. tell my family eight. <laughs> Ooh. Hey. Oh, wow. The Shabobs were so blessed. <laughs> the Shabobs were very blessed. We finally got our silver gauntlets. All right, excellent. Thank you very much for your Shabomb knowledge, Game Stable. You are truly the hero that we needed in this playthrough. It's making my night, honestly. <laughs> All right, it's... so now... Oh, you can continue. Oh, no, I, I think I'm... I think I might be out of, like, uh, facts off the top of my head, though, so it's... Good they didn't overstay. <laughs> So, do another Mega Flip. Oh, I don't have Rudo's letter anymore. I guess I have Ferrari's Wind. Or does you can this do only it. work with Rudo's letter? Can you not do it with bugs in this game? I don't think so. You could just do the roll so. version, though. I could. I'm not, I am not. don't think I've actually ever done the roll version of this before, though. Uh, there's a really easy setup. I think you're in the right position right now. You have to do the thing where you press A to roll on the same frame you start holding up. Right. Okay, 
I can't use claim check as child, so... So, so the way that I've seen people do the position setup for this, and I don't know why it matters, but I see them back walk into the switch and then just release L so that he'll just like jump on it automatically. That's the position setup I usually see. Okay, I'm a lot farther back now. Mm. Which the, is uh, unintuitive. The, the, vanilla, the vanilla OT setup is you target the door uh, and then turn around right. and bonk it and then jump slash in. That's oh, the right. setup bonk I use. Jump slash, yeah. yeah, I've never been able to get this version of the trick before, at least without like intense pause buffering on the original game. I mean, I guess I could try with bugs and see what happens, but I have a feeling this probably doesn't work. I, I was thinking explicitly for ocarina items, so... Right. Actually, I guess I'd have to really catch the bugs first. I mean, I guess I could try doing, uh... Okay, I guess this works. <laughs> Alright, bye bugs. Oh. Huh. Nice. Thank you, Adef. Yeah, no problem. I could have sworn that didn't work with Bottle, but I guess it does. Good to know. Consider us even for the Shabam facts. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, that saves us from having to like, do the rest of the dungeon up until that point. Very good trick. Now it's time to fight Baronade. So Baronade can go by pretty quickly uh, since we have Deku Nuts. Um, you can use Deku Nuts to get rid of uh, like all of the beery circles that will try to appear around Baronade. Like this, and then just like that, and now all the beeries are gone. And I purposely rolled into Baronade there so that uh, Baronade would get up quicker after going back down into the ground. One more cycle here. And all right. So this will be getting us the Fire Medallion. And because we have the Water, Fire, and Force Medallions now, we can actually go get the uh, Sheik in Kakariko Shek, which is normally where you'd get the Nocturne of Shadow from. What is this? Ooh, we got beans. Nice. Always gotta love some magic beans. And, all right. Let's see, is there anything else I wanted to do as child? I don't have any of the spiritual stones, so I can't get, like, the Ocarina of Time or anything. Did you ever get a well key? Um, oh yeah, I believe I did get a well key. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> Still zero for bottom of the well. I swear you did. Maybe you save scummed it? Oh, I might have save scummed it, that's true. Uh, in any case... I think I wanted to go back to Kakariko anyway, both to trade the, uh, to trade the Keaton mask and... I think there was something else I was thinking of. Oh no, I wanted to go back to the forest so I could play Sorry, a song for Skull Kid, that's what it was. Actually, I guess we could also go into, um, Jerunia's room from Death Mountain Crater and play Sorry, a song for him as well. That's a good check. Yeah. Very good check. Speaking of cutscenes that haven't been removed. <laughs> Sadness. Let's get our Keaton mask. So there's actually a really weird thing you can do with the guard here if you have the Keaton mask. Um, if you, like, are wearing the Keaton mask and are about to sell it to the guard, but then you say no, 
uh, to giving it to him, he, like, throws a temper tantrum and just closes the gate. Because you didn't sell it to him. Uh, so that's something that can happen. And then once you finally sell it to him, you open up the gate again. Or he'll open up the gate. So that's a thing you can do. Today I learned... I'm gonna go up to uh, Death Mountain Crater so that I can uh, do a mega flip down and get to Darunia's room. Oh, and I forgot there's actually that scrub in Death Mountain Crater that we can check also. There's a cow in that grotto, but thankfully that's not something we have to get. But no, yeah, the guard closing the gate there is not new. That's something that can happen in the original game also. It's just that, like, like why would you ever say no to selling the mask kind of thing? Eating mask is pretty cool. But you can always just get another one, I guess. I don't need the Skulchula that's here. Uh, I guess I never came up here at all because this rock is still here. Okay, then. So there's a chest we can get here. And there's the scrub that we can get down at the bottom of the ladder. Oh, nice wallet. Finally found a wallet. Or a bomb refill. All right. All right, so normally Child Link uh, can't get up to uh, like where the backside of Darunia's room would be, but I can because I know how to do a cool trick called Mega Flip. Did you ever check the heart piece on top of the volcano? Uh, I believe I looked at it. Okay, yeah, it's just a bomb drop by the looks of it. I know that the one in the wall uh, alcove is just uh, Skulchula, like a gold Skulchula token. All right, Did now you get it's a time... hammer grotto there, by the way? No, I never got the hammer grotto. I was about to mention that also. Uh, Good thing I'll be doing Fire Temple when I go adult again. The routing. Uh, between, like, this game and the original, a, a majority of the changes were just graphical. Um, there were some very slight gameplay changes between the two, but nothing, like, huge. Like, I think the biggest thing is, uh, puzzles that require you to slash your sword through a wall aren't there anymore, and instead, like, the switches are always moved to a place that's not behind the wall, like in Spirit and Water Temple. Uh, but it's pretty faithful to the original, gameplay-wise. Money. By the way, gamers, be sure to follow the runner at twitch.tv slash gymnast86 if you enjoyed the content of the evening. And of course, follow Games Table at twitter.com slash games table for more uh, bubble based enemy facts. True, there is some bomb content on there. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to try and get uh, the spinning pot item here. Normally it's a hard piece, but it's randomized because this is a randomizer, and that was not the correct time for throwing that in. I believe the correct time is when the frowny face starts to turn away from Link. Uh, it is whenever the meh face is facing you, the like middle one. Okay, yeah, so that, uh, that with that thing. It would be nice if to actually throw it into the pot in the center. Okay. The 
wait for the spinning animation each time. There we go. Yo, another compass. Let's go. Nice. And it's the Dodongo's Cavern Compass. And we will never get lost in Dodongo's Cavern ever again. Actually, I could do Ocarina in the game as well right now. And a slingshot check. Although, I don't know if you already did that. Yeah, I think he I already did it. Thankfully, Game Stable has shortened how many uh, iterations we have to go through here. I was just about to ask that. Just after the first time, we get our reward, which is a recovery heart. All right. Oh, you can do the uh, the Skull Kid too. Yeah, because I have Saria's song. Should have gotten the Skull Mask before you came here. Yeah, I should have. Oh, I did come here from Kakariko. The Water Temple boss key. All right, so I can beat Water Temple now. Technically. Uh, and because I have Song of Storms, I'm actually going to go to Zora's River again here. Were you going to say something, Adip? No. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought I accidentally cut you off. Actually, two checks you can get with the um, frog songs over here, but one of them requires having every single child song besides the uh, Song of Storms, which we don't have yet, so that's not a check that we can really get. But we can get this one for a bomb drop. Also, I don't believe we ever bought the item from Bean Daddy, so I'm gonna go buy that now also. Can I side hop jump slash around here? Gamer. Gamer. Alright, well then from here I still have a piece. Oh, oh yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was There's just about to say that. Here. I just came over here to get more bomb chew drops, as I'm sure you know. Right, of course. Yeah. yeah, so there's another Song of Storms Grotto here that I forgot about until the game stable thankfully reminded me. More bomb drops. Oh, there's our bottom of the well key. All right, maybe we should go to bottom of the well first. Or actually, no, it did just turn daytime, so I think I'm gonna go to Lun Lun Ranch first and get the song, or and get the song check from Malin. May or may not be a song. Speed up the process of getting there using our Hessing capabilities. Eagling can go very fast. Also, we can do fun things with the camera here. Oh, darn, I stopped accidentally. I'm not expecting to hit that wall. Thank 
you. A big bomb bag. Oh boy. Thank you for the bomb refill. We can You're gonna have all the biggest here. upgrades and still no bow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I good enough to cross over the bridge? I think it's over here. Oh no, I missed it. Darn it. Oh, I didn't really need to dive. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Link. Okay, it's still pretty much daytime. Uh, so instead of using a navy dive to get to the bottom of the well, I can actually do... Um, a bit of an out-of-bounds flight with a cucko to get down there. Pick up this cucko. Uh, the reason we can't navi-dive during the daytime is because uh, the developers actually attempted to patch being able to get to bottom of the well early, so they put a giant rock in front of the entrance to it. Uh, but they only put it there during the daytime, so <laughs> during the nighttime you can still actually navi-dive down. Oh, Grezzo, what uh, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> to the bottom of the well. I mean, the rock's got a family. Gotta go home. <laughs> Gotta go Can't home. Day. <laughs> no. you're, not gonna, you're not gonna go home for dinner? Spend time with your family? Right, now I gotta wait for the cuckoo to come back here. Nope. Hey... So now we can just do this lovely out of bounds flight to get past the giant rock. This is a wonderful trick that I've never seen. <laughs> yeah, it's a really, really cool showcase in my opinion. All right, now I can actually save scum uh, the key that I meant to save scum earlier. Game stable, any guesses for what we're gonna get here? Um. Three sculptulas, three bows. Ooh, that's a that's a prediction. Oh, okay. Well, that's one of them correct. Oh, I meant the three sculptulas are gonna be the three bows. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. I'm gonna say the sculptulas are gonna be. Yeah, I'm tired. Whatever game stable said, I'm doubling down on that. <laughs> three bows. Good choice. Thanks. So we got our ISG, and we're going to check what's in this room. The answer is a Skeletula token. Game Stable so failed that. me. Okay, I'm... I guess there's two bows. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Never mind. We're still yeah. on track. Minor miscalculation. Uh, there's a question in chat about Skulltulas giving items that is only in dungeons. Yeah, so currently only the dungeon Skulltulas uh, are randomized. Mostly because the overworld ones, um, if we randomize those also, we're gonna be waiting for nighttime a lot, uh, which can get kind of annoying and just boring, in my opinion. What is this one gonna be? Oh yeah, all the keys also missed that. <laughs> that is a blue rupee. Uh. Hmm. 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 Well, there's a lot more checks still. That's true. There is still one chest that we can't get here at all, which is the, uh, the one that you get for beating Dead Hand. 
We can't get that one until we get Zelda's Lullaby, because even if you act or glitch your way into that room, um, the chest just won't spawn if you beat Dead Hand. What about the one at the bottom of the water? You can't get that one either, right? Oh, right, yeah. We can't get the ones at the bottom of the water either. That is correct. Uh, actually, I can just see what this sculpture is out here. Lord away. Bomb shoes. Oh I guess I was over so. three on those. <laughs> Darn. It's Can't okay. Game stable couldn't predict where all three bows were gonna be. Yeah, what are the chances of that? Uh, I mean, one over four hundred and eighty-four <laughs> to the third power. I guess it'd be one over four hundred eighty-four times one over four hundred eighty-three is one over four hundred eighty-two. Oh yeah, that's correct. Not to get technical on you or anything, gymnast, but... <laughs> Last time I did math was three years ago. You should also be able to get the map chest, too, in the basement, I think. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I think I could just fall down into the basement from here and get the... And I can do actor glitch for now that one's just where's the hole? Why can I not find the hole? <laughs> when you need it, you can't find it. Yeah. Sorry, my life. About bottom of the well. <laughs> yeah, bottom of the well has not been very kind to OG 3D. Life. Ah, okay, more well, fire temple keys. Pretty good. You should be able and to full we'll clear do... that now, right? Yeah, we should be able to full clear Fire Temple now. We're still pretty much just on the hunt for a bow, light arrows, and Zelda's lullaby. So I did lose my shield, I guess, which wasn't very good. I thought I used the Deku Nuts early enough, though. Alright, so the camera after coming out of a crawl space is a little bit wonky. Um, so if we try to open the door to the next room while the camera is still focused on the crawl space, it'll actually cancel the animation uh, of Link opening up the door here. Nice first try. And so now all the actors in this room aren't loaded, uh, including the water in this room, so... Uh, we go over here, we can kind of just jump down into the water and into the crawl space on this side. And this allows us to get back here to this room. Uh, we're not going to beat Dead Hand now, though, because beating Dead Hand's not going to give us anything if we get into this room like this, because getting to this room looks really weird and just kind of phases through it like that uh, for some reason. But we can get the invisible chest back here. Which has the map. Couldn't have asked for nice. anything better right there. I don't think we actually got anything useful there. I guess we got some bomb shoes. So anything else is child link to do. One over 484 factorial, it would only be if you were trying to calculate the probability of one specific... One specific seed, yeah. Of every single item. Of every if you're just seed. <laughs> yeah, if you're just talking about those three checks specifically, you only have to do the first three numbers. So we're gonna go. Then ahead you and actually go get to multiply it by six, because they're inter the three bows are interchangeable. Oh yeah, that's true. Because it's it's combinations, not permutations. Right. Man, how often are you using X pick Y instead of X choose X? <laughs> you know, just math things. Very epic. I took combinatorics once. I, oh, yeah. I definitely 
<laughs> got a lot of rush during that class. <laughs> I, uh... Yeah, I didn't do great in my stats class, but... Professor brought his dog to class once, so that was nice. That's dub. Yeah, a oh, huge dub. And so to break this rock, I should have broken a lot earlier. These three scrubs. Which has the bomb drop. Oh boy, the Deku shield that I just lost. The purple rupee. I did not get scammed. You guys might also notice that Link actually has uh, black gauntlets on his arms and not silver gauntlets because the custom gauntlet color that I chose for silver gauntlets is black in this playthrough. If we do find gold gauntlets, they will end up uh, appearing blue on Link. I'm a blue gauntlets man myself. I like green too, though. Green's pretty good. Get down with green. Alright, yeah, five spear temple keys, we're good. My RBA brain is so messed up, like, trying to compute how blue gauntlets <laughs> could be gold. <laughs> and black gauntlets could be silver. First, we're going to jump up here to where this Skulltula token is. Got quite a few things we can check here in Fire Temple. So. That's just a blue rupee, so I don't need it. Thankfully, we do have the Fire Temple map and compass, so we should be good making sure that we don't forget anything. I would say my favorite ocarina song is probably the Requiem of Spirit. That's a close second for me behind Nocturne. I also still don't have hover boots, which not not really necessary for Fire Temple, but would be very nice just to have in general. I know Game Stable's favorite ocarina song. Oh yeah. It's Scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. Big fan of XY 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 XY. How can XY. you not be? You're telling me you don't use LR 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 LR? No, it takes so much longer to hit those buttons. No, it doesn't. They're so far away from each other, you can use separate hands for them. Meanwhile, I am so much harder. <laughs> in my brain, I'm like, right, C down A, C down A, C down A. <laughs> oh yeah, in the original game, that would be pretty bad, but... I guess that would be A-Z-A-Z -A -Z on a GameCube controller. I use I N64. Do... Uh, I actually do XR a lot. I can see XR being good. Only the important topics here on Challenger Approaching. Yes, yeah, so next we're going to get into a two hour long debate over which item goes on which button. Game stable, uh, can you please start us out with your hookshot preference? Yeah, please. Hookshot goes on X, boots go on Y. If you're doing a hookshot jump, I agree. However, if you're not doing a hookshot jump, I'm gonna reverse it on you. I have no opinion in this game. As respectable. Well, but the reason I don't do that, well, <laughs> like common knowledge that I don't really do roll equipping. <laughs> oh, I see. I mean, yeah, I guess if you don't do roll equipping, it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, anyway, speaking of rolls, I'm going to roll into an attempted ledge clip that I unfortunately just failed. Just failed again. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is get blasted by a bomb. Uh, after I do the ledge clip to get down to the chest under there. There we go. Good. That trick to me is like quintessential speedrunning. Like, get out of bounds, and then you need some kind of damage boost to make it work. Ooh, double magic. Mark that off as well. For what it's worth, Choose on C down, hook shot C left, bomb C right, but you know. 
There seem to I think be a that's lot a good of opinion. people. Yeah, I agree too. There seem to be a lot of people who are against putting shoes on Z, though. Yeah, like, I get that. Um, but again, as someone that uses N64 controller, that's not really... Like, I'm, I'm strictly seeing C down in my brain rather than Z. Right. Not having hover boots here feels very awkward. Oh wow, there are like a million chests in this dungeon, I'm now realizing. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, oh, sir. <laughs> my Zora tunic. I'm gonna go in and out of the room over here and then cast Roy's Wind. So that I can return to it. Um... Oh, you have long shots. You can just go up to the Scarecrow platform. Yeah, that's right. I have long shots, so I don't need to. I mean, I don't have. I didn't ever play the song for the Scarecrow anyway, so. I would have had to hover if I don't have long shot. I've got a setup for it. You'd, you'd be fine. First, we have to get the uh, other chests that are down here. Well, it's not only the chest from the Scarecrow, it's also the Sculptula up there. The two Sculptulas up there. Right. Someone in chat was asking, or saying that they didn't know about the chest. I mean, I guess now that we also have, uh, or since we have, uh, we've had Longshot and Iron Boots for a while, so I actually can get to the Toilet Room chest in Gerudo Training Grounds. Uh, even though I don't have Song of Time, I can actually do a long shot clip to get underneath the Song of Time blocks. If for whatever you, reason you need to go back there. You can also get the Like Like Room. So now I'm going to return to my Ferrari's win point. Uh, I don't... Do I need to set it again? I'll just set it again. Why not? Okay. Uh, Oh yeah, and that's right, as you said, because I have Silver Gauntlets, I can go to the Like Like Room now. Alright, so now I can do a pretty precise, uh, long shot grab here. I believe we want to stand just right here. And if we aim just right... Ooh. Yeah, you can kind of see the reticle changing. There we go. Very nice. That was quite fast. Yeah, it's not as precise in 3D, so you you don't you're like it's not literally you know like quote pixel perfect, uh, as some people like to describe it in the original game. But it's still a little. It takes a few tries most of the time. Another blue rupee. And then there's one Skoshala right here. Wow, it's a vanilla Skoshala token. What are the chances? What are the odds? Well... Isn't it just like basically one in five because there are a hundred? Yeah, you could yeah, you could basically assume it's one in five. It's actually better by quite a margin. Yo, the Jabu Jabu Compass. Furry's wind. Well, actually, no, it's not one in five, because so many of the Skulltulas are overworld, and they're always tokens. Oh yeah, that's true. For this playthrough. I think it's like 50-50, or it's like 45-55 between the dungeons and the overworld. Like that. I'm gonna do a short hookshot jump to get back out. Best is. That means it's like one in eight. 
it's 50 over 400 or so. Check some fire temple here. Gotta be something good. There's so much, so many checks in fire temple. Absolutely I like your guarantee. I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, I forgot. It's 50-50. It's either a token or it's not. Ah, right. How could I have forgotten such a simple fact? Now see, that right there is flawless logic, but this is a no logic playthrough, so we can't oh. actually use that to oh. determine what the chance is. Okay. So, yeah. so that's what that means. Right. Just to roll past the flames. Thankfully, that's something we can do, because going around the flame maze is just kind of annoying. It's a key, too, right? Doesn't it? Ah, yeah, I believe it does. Load. And we could always just, like, hess or mega flip through the flame walls, but... Yeah, that's true. So since we already have the hammer, we can use it to just immediately get uh, the Flare Dancer out of its flame body by striking the center of the platform when the Flame Dancer comes out. Oh, the Flare Dancer. Now oh, I guess we get some hammer doesn't very much damage. Yeah, it's weird. The big Goron Sword is also bad damage values on Flare Dancers. chest up in the next room, and then there's the last uh, Goron who's stuck inside uh, the cell. Which, we don't have Song of Time, so we can't open up the switch to that cell, but we do have hookshot clipping, so it's not really a big deal. temple more like stupid temple got him more Yo, like lame nice temple we're we're just three funny guys all right <laughs> i should have played requiem uh there's two chests oh no actually uh, i can there no way well you can do a lot more forest temple now, I think, that you have boots. Yeah, I can do a few more checks in forest temple. Um, we're still kind of being hindered by no Zelda's lullaby and no bow currently. How many spirit keys do I have? Hello. Oh wait, I just forgot. There's a silver gauntlet's rock over here. Oh. Has two business scrubs in it. Can't you also hookshot jump to. Yes. Uh, I can hookshot jump up to the top of the arch. Uh, 
I wouldn't be able to hover boost because I don't have hover boots. Oh, right. Yeah. But I could hover just straight up. It's a nice small key grotto. Um, I think you can't actually do the hookshot jump here with iron boots because you sink too far in the sand. Oh, right. I remember there being something weird about that. Now let's see what happens anyway. That doesn't get us very much height. If we had like a max height hookshot jump, the levers stop spawning. Hmm. Yeah. You can always not. just hover up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can always just hover up there too. How many bomb shoes we got? We got twenty. I should really That's farm for more bomb shoes somewhere. I guess we could start here. I mean, if you do like vanilla spirit hover, you should only need like nine because you have the long shot. That is true, yeah. Although I don't think you can get quite as high with your hovering because you, you can't like shield a bomb shoe immediately. Oh, yeah, yeah, the insta drop that you can do in N64. Are we able to get this Silchula behind the Song of Time block? Uh, yeah, with Boomerang. Oh, right. I feel like this has to be kind of convoluted, though. I think a spin attack can just kill it. Maybe not. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> or just a flash. Mm. If that's a spirit key, that would be really good. I guess we could, uh, or wait, oh no, you can't do this. So how would we do this? I think you go into the alcove on the other side of the room and like throw it towards the left and then side hop into the right or something. This is really weird because we can't see <laughs> it's going. There we go. Oh, <laughs> okay, it's that easy. Things like that just sort of work, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> like, the boomerang getting the items out of bounds, I just, I never have a setup for those types of things. Well, unfortunately, we can't get the other chest because that requires Zelda's lullaby. Um, so I guess we could go back into Gerudo Training Grounds and get the five chests that we couldn't get there earlier. Let's go off this one. Are we about to see Reverse Wasteland? I mean, probably. I mean, we already did go through Wasteland earlier. Not to be able to get here. Another opportunity to do quick put away. <laughs> At some point, you gotta start YBAing yourself arrows. Oh no. <laughs> Why did you have to mention that? It's not as even hard. <laughs> what, what contents would I YBA to get arrows? Bugs. Okay, yeah. Okay, so this is going through the wasteland. Go back get to this side, because we don't have the Lens of Truth, so we wouldn't be able to use the guide to get through the wasteland. Yeah, 
this pole, and then this pole. I have shot these. And then that's the carpet salesman who is not randomized yet. But will probably be randomized in future releases of the game. So here we are back at Real Fortress. I don't think I've ever had to use that loading zone going back from Haunted Wasteland to Gerudo Fortress in like an exceedingly long time. So it feels very weird coming into Gerudo Fortress. This. Let us equip the Zora tunic. And the Hylian shields so that we look better. My man. He gets it. He's gonna do the toilet to... room and look good doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Might be a bit tricky. Yeah, the ledges here are kind of far away from each other. Can uh, you can long shot the torch on the? Oh yeah, that's true. Press down the switch first. Not quite here. Yeah, I mean, if I had Song of Time, I would just spawn the Song of Time blocks, but we don't got none of those. Really? Man. I do not remember it being this picky. training grounds first. Like the one up here, because I didn't down the fire. Obviously, this would be significantly easier if we had hover boots also. No. <laughs> Alright, well, let's go do the other room first that I know we're going to be able to get through easily. Maybe we'll find hover boots there, and that would make our lives a lot easier. Nah, ZL's here. Well, ZL would also be useful. Just not immediately in Gerudo training grounds. Now we can finally push this block. This is a very high density location. Yeah. Given how much it's like actually left. Yeah, how many checks do you think you've done total, Jim? I have no idea. Maybe like 200? Oh, probably more than that. I mean, we're also not checking like 50 sculptural locations. Oh, yeah, fair. But pretty much everything that's that I've not checked right now is either locked behind Bow or uh, Zelda's Lullaby. Oh, there's another Hylian shield. To all of Ice Cavern, although that's not very many things. Yeah, well, that's 
That's like seven. Yeah, that's seven things. Here, Temple Man. Yeah, after this, we should definitely head on over to Ice Cavern. The chest in here that we can't get because we don't have a bow. Here we are. I feel like maybe the play might be to try and do a damage boost. Uh, where the fire is. I still think you can... I still think you can probably jump down from the torch ledge. Eh, maybe not, that's too far. Yeah, not quite. I suppose I could hover to it if we get desperate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I really don't remember it being this picky though, so I'm surprised that I'm failing it so much. Still never gave the claim check to the Goron. Really? Well, it's official, guys. This is too hard. It's been a good. It's been a good run, Jim. Can you long shot back before this final jump to skip it? So now, how do you want to do this? Oh, let's go, Jim. All right. Very <laughs> nice. Immediately knocked him. Immediately knocked back down. All right, now we can get to the toilet room now. Oh, the best room in all of gaming. Indeed. All right, so to get down beneath these song of time blocks, we need to aim just like this. Now, I won't be able to get back out of the toilet room once I actually collect all these silver rupees. Um, but I can save warp and then come back to this room. The current will stop trying to take me. We go back and any guesses on what this is gonna be well i gotta guess for what i want it to be so it's it's the bow i think it's gonna be light arrows but like still not actually a bow okay oh, yeah. that would that would be good and the answer is a shadow temple key Alright, well, I guess that's something. Alright, um... Let's see, I did get the chest. I actually don't think that you, I don't think you did. I could be absolutely wrong about that, but... I should go up and check, I can't see it when it's nighttime. If I miss this one, and it's like actually something important, I'm gonna be, feel like a fool. Oh, I did miss it. 
Could barely not reach it. Is 37th in 3D? I believe so, yes. Yes, it is. Is it in the randomizer pool? No. <laughs> We didn't miss anything by me missing that earlier. Uh, what did I want to play? I wanted to get... Flame check? Oh. Or, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I was like, I want to play Bolero, but that doesn't feel right. <laughs> that is what I wanted to play. Yeah, all we're looking... Like, like, once we find the bow, we'll basically be able to do everything else. Uh, the only other thing that could be locked is Zelda's Lullaby if it's, uh, say, somehow locked behind, like, a fairy fountain or something. Because uh, then we wouldn't be able to get it normally without some sort of inventory manipulation. I mean... Worst case, you could, like... Death hole to Bongo if you wanted, instead of death holding to Ganon. That's true. That would be from Deku Tree Boss Room. Yeah. All right. Let's actually give the claim check after all this time. Another hard container. Oh man. We are racking up the health here. Uh, no logic, it's been asked a couple times in the chat of late, uh, no logic means that there is no logic to where items are, so an item could, for example, be on a spot that requires that item to get. There's a few more things that I can get here in Forest Temple now. We also have some more small keys, so I don't really have to worry about preserving any. There's actually some pretty fun glitches we can do here now that we uh, have the iron boots. We get the wedge clips through here again. Uh, one of these fun glitches. Oh, wait, is the water not here? Okay, good. Uh, we can do is called, I think it's just called Gravity Glitch. Uh, if we put on the iron boots right before we grab onto the vines here, um, Link's gravity will now actually be that of what he would uh, have if he was underwater. Uh, so, he walks around a little weirdly. But there's a few cool things that this allows. Oh wait, does it get cancelled if we go through a door? I guess it does. That's okay, we can do it in this room too. Because I have the long shot. Uh, if we do it at the same time that we grab onto this ladder... Here, hook shot back up onto the vines. Uh, and then here we can actually get a side hop that makes it all the way down to this platform over here, if my angle is correct. Just a slow fall down to the ground. Angle looks good. And there we go. All right. There's one chest in this room we can get, and then we'll go back out. 
courtyard. It doesn't uh, help us to press down that switch now because we would need bow if we wanted to pose. Another fire temple key that we don't need. You're gonna find all eight fire temple keys before you find a bow. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. That is, like, substantially more unlikely. <laughs> Now we're going to do some more fun hookshot jumping over in this courtyard. Oh, I need to do a higher hookshot jump than that. And this will allow us to get up to the higher balconies here without needing to uh, use a small key. Keep this hand. This hand. <laughs> this hand. <laughs> he doesn't want to take a guess if it's a floor master or a wall master, because uh, I don't know if you know this, no one actually knows. That's fair. Pretty sure that one's a floor master because it actually crawls over the floor. Nope. Really? I. Wait. See, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought the wall masters were the ones that come from the ceiling. Nope, I was right. That is a wall master that you just fought, which nice. makes absolutely no sense. And floor masters, I guess floor master kind of makes sense. Wait, no. Okay. You ready for this? The hands in Wind Waker that come out of the ground, those are floor masters. The hand you just fought, right. that's also a floor master. Okay, but right. the hand but they're completely different enemies. But the hands in like uh Okay, now I'm just confused. Okay, and wall masters are... What? Navi's comment on wall master on a different wiki is watch out for its shadow on the floor. I'm... something's wrong. <laughs> no, yeah, it's shadow on the floor because it's hovering over you from the ceiling. No, but different wikis are saying that enemy's called a floor master and some of them are calling it a wall master. <laughs> Oh, okay, well. I can't. I guess, I guess the I can't. debates will just have to continue. I can't research this anymore. My brain will explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very un much under the impression that floor masters were on the floor and wall masters were on the ceiling, but... I... maybe not. Yes, the hands broke ADEF after all this time. I can't do it anymore. This is the last challenger approaching. <laughs> oh yeah, don't even bring up dead hand. Where does he fit into all this? <laughs> dead hand. No, no way. Oh my god. No way, dude. <laughs> After all this time, we just had to go look in the vanilla location, and there it was. No way, dude. That's so funny. Oh, man. <laughs> I should have set Ferrari's wind in GTG. Oh, well. I messed it up. I have a gamer fact. A gamer fact? Games Table, you know, had all those Shabam facts. I have a Poe fact. Ooh. That I bet both of you know. But Ooh, the, the chat might not know it. 
uh, targeting a Poe causes them to disappear faster. Ah, yes. It is indeed true. Who made this busted randomizer? Jim did, and he's been lying about not knowing where everything is. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely wanted to delay getting Bo for almost four and a half hours. You, you ready for another Poe fact? This, yes, this, one's, this one's really gonna wet your whistle. Did, did, did you know that the four Poe sisters are named after the sisters in that one book? <laughs> Little I women. did. Yeah, that's the I one. Also, yeah. I did know that, but I also didn't know what book it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll finish getting the checks here, and then we'll beat beat Forest Temple, even though it's only going to give us the uh, Zora Sapphire. Who knows? We might still need it. Jim, just hover over the boat gap, forehead. I mean, we still need light arrows if we're going to go down that route. It's on Bongo, trust me. The light arrows are on Bongo, okay. Actually, funny story about light arrows being on Bongo. Yeah, there's lore to that, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, there was a, there was a test seed that, uh, some of our friends were doing, like, a, a few months ago at this point, like, way before the randomizer actually released, and, um, there was, uh, in the spoiler log, uh, me and GameStable knew that the Bongo Bongo heart container, uh, was going to be light arrows, uh, in the seed. Also, I believe I got everything here in Forest Temple. Uh, and then one of our friends gets to the Bongo Bongo heart container, and it's just a heart container. And we're like, what the heck? Where are the light arrows? And it turns out that um, I had incorrectly defined Bongo Bongo's heart container as Jabu Jabu's heart container, actually. Well, that's um, fun. <laughs> so, that was... We were kind of lucky that we encountered that in a playthrough where, like, a key item just so happened to be uh, on, like, a location that wasn't defined correctly. I assume you do not have Forest BK. Uh, no. Also, I did say I was going to go beat Forest Temple and then just straight up left, didn't I? Okay. Um, you, could, uh, you could do the Lakeside Lab while you're here. Yeah, that's true. I could also beat Morpha. Let's just do that. Right, now, I'm gonna see if I'm a real gamer right here. Oh, no way he's doing the thing. This is the big gamer check. Yay! Wow. What, what a, a gamer. gamer. The Wes. The, the Wes. Wes. <laughs> We have iron boots down here. Uh, we can kind of cheese uh, doing the like dive to the bottom of the lakeside lab uh, by hookshotting that box and then unequipping iron boots. I all just will be like, "Yeah, you did it." And be like, "Thanks." And then we'll leave. Oh, wow, the bow opens a lot, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I still can't do Druidal Archery because I don't have a Pona. Actually, I guess... Can't I technically steal a Pona even if I don't have a Pona's song? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And just so long as you don't get caught three times, she'll stay and you can keep doing Archery, but you already got the Gerudo card anyway, so... Yeah. Actually, do I have Water Temple boss key? I do, yes. Oh no, 
no, now I have to do this the regular way. I don't have hover boots. Okay, I think we'll make it. That room is like very cursed, the vanilla way. I'm not sure why it is that way. Oh, I almost got her. Alright, so Amorpha is pretty easy. At VFG. <laughs> Can't call out my man like that. <laughs> oh wait, I think I miscounted. Oh, get back here. That little rainbow effect is fun. Alright, so this is going to give us the Kokiri Emerald when we step into this warp portal here. And then we're also going to get the item from the heart container. So at this point, we're still looking for the light arrows and Zelda's lullaby. If we want to beat the game like the legit randomizer way, you could say. Uh, but if if we end up going for too long, we do have the option of wrong warping to the final boss. Also, shout out to the vanilla heart container. I think probably... I don't know how you boys feel about this, but like, if you don't have light arrows by like 430XX or something around there, I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. Okay. Could do 44XX. What's the current timer at? I actually don't have a timer. 40947. 409, okay. Let's see, do we want to wait the whole night? No, not, not the whole real night, the whole in-game night. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can get the, like, or the fire arrow check. Yeah. Yeah, we can. I think so at this point. Not gonna be back here. We can play a game. Hey, I have a game, all right? You ready? Game? Yeah. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Closest without going... Yeah, just closest wins, all right? So I'm, I'm thinking of the number. I got it. I'm stable. Do you go first? Uh, that's not fair. Okay, fine. 33. 34. Well... Six, 62, so... <laughs> Game stable. The real strat is you pick 49 or 50 and then let Jim pick 51. Yeah... Dang. You played the game wrong is basically what I'm trying to say, so... I did. Um, you're just bad, I guess. As soon as he said his doesn't. pick, I knew that I messed up. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe not. If it was 33, you'd be dead on. Or if it was below 33. That too. You got a 1 in 3 really? chance of winning the game. Really? I had a 50% chance. Either it was greater or not greater. Yeah, you either win or you don't. Oh, that beautiful gold sculpture token. That Beautiful gold sculpture token. Animation and all. Oh my god, Animation. wait. Somebody in the chat guessed it. Oh, well, I guess they win. Cortezon guessed 62. I don't know if they guessed it before or after I'd said it, but... Seems legit. Right. Uh, I guess we can just go steal a Pona. After killing that boy, and then head off, to, head off back to the Gerudo Fortress and get those last few, um, those last few uh, training grounds checks and the Gerudo Archery game checks. You did check Nocturne cutscene, right? Oh, actually, I don't think I have. That's a good point. We should go do that. We have the power of Hessing on our side, so it'll be fast. Well, maybe not if there's fences in the way. Don't you have Nocturne? I do, but I feel like at this point it would be faster to just Hess. Hey, you're the science guy. You're the you're the Zelda science boy, I trust you. I feel like my most of my Zelda science knowledge is consolidated to Skyward Sword and Wind Waker. Not so much to this game. 
All right, well, game stable is the Shabam boy. <laughs> well, right, but I didn't time how long it would take to Hess across Hyrule Field versus play Nocturne to get to Kakariko. Money. Oh, I just saw oh. it on the uh, the stream, which is a little bit behind what Game Stable and I are watching. But they made an opening in the side of those fences in OT 3D. Yeah, I don't. I, I just realized that too. I didn't know that was there either. <laughs> <laughs> you hessed right through it, and I was like, "What?" Yeah. Another fire tunnel. Let's see, song wise, we're still missing Epona's song. Zelda's lullaby. Uh, oh, I got Valero. And we're also missing Sun Song and Song of Time. Oh, right. So, uh, when Game Stable said that Jim literally built the logic, end quote, what he means is the logic for the randomizer in general, like the actual program, uh, not this specific seed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, before it's a little murkier now, but before this randomizer release, me and Jim had this really nice like split system where he did all the logic stuff and like developed the app for the randomizer and I kind of worked on all the in-game patches and stuff. Yeah, so most of our work was separate from the other that is a gold sculpture token. Goodbye. What was the uh, the app scripted in, if you don't mind me asking? What was the what? The app that you made, what was it scripted in? Oh, it's just C++, like all uh, 3DS homebrew is. Or I think like most 3DS homebrew is. Yeah, definitely most. Yeah, that, 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 the app is C++. The patch is mostly C, um, but there's assembly as well, as needed. Ah, let's see, you can pass clips through this. A really long time since I've had to steal a Pona. You can just hover, my guy. Oh, right. <laughs> OT 3D brain. Thank you for you're also, me. you're also gonna hit every cucko probably. I don't think they have spherical collision. Yeah. Amazing staircase hover. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it looks really hard. <laughs> Must be tough. Finally, do the big Poe guy too. Yeah, that's true. Does anybody else remember? Well, okay, I'm gonna phrase this differently because everyone will remember. Hey, everybody, remember how when you were a kid, shooting those big Poes felt impossible? Anyway, that's my relatable comment for the night. What would you rate that? <laughs> we'll see. The reason it felt so impossible relatable. because. Uh, we didn't have gyro aiming as a kid. I think for a lot of people it was... There. I'm pretty sure I've done that grotto already. The one under the bombable rock? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's another big Poe. Alright, so we only need one big Poe for the market guy, thankfully. Forty-four Skeletal tokens. Maybe I should update the tracker with how many tokens we have. No, they're not useful tokens, but. Now we can make our way over to Gerudo Fortress again. And the bridge should be formed, but I guess even if it wasn't, we would just jump across with the Pona. You can even do the grotto over here now with fire. 
No, that's just a Sculptula token. Though. Right. Is... So, I know earlier we had that debate about CAC archery. If it's a different reward for not having a quiver, then is it a different reward now? I don't think so. I mean, I think you said you cached that game stable so that it's like always... Yeah, it'll just be a purple ruby game now. Reward. Yeah. So there's two chests right at the beginning of Gerudo Training Grounds that we can get to, and then there's the one that's a little bit deeper in with the room where we have to shoot a bunch of different eyes. I just cut that sign. Yeah, we just cut that oh. sign in half. It's probably not the best place to park a Pona, but... Now that we have the bow. Oh, yeah, we also do have the ability to do fire related things. I could go to the wasteland also, I guess, for that one check. Oh man, progressive scale. That's not useful. More bomb shoes. Uh, how do we want to get to this? This is, uh, this is my favorite song in the game right here generic dungeon theme. Oh yeah, it's just really, that, that gets me. It just has that sense of foreboding that you don't really get with many of the other tracks. Yeah, I like the part where it goes... You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Oh, that gets rid of the fire. Oh, this room is so confusing. <laughs> Actually, shoot the eye. There we go. This one is a recovery heart. How wonderful. And it seemed like when we were in Dodongo's cavern that the rest of the seed was just gonna be so fast. Yeah. And then it took us two and a half hours to find Bo. <laughs> Thankfully, this minigame, uh, not too bad with gyro aiming. What's your guess for the points game stable? Um, 1560 and then 1610. I'm gonna say 1610 and then 1560. I'm just doing the number guessing game thing to you again. <laughs> don't seem to have very much confidence in me. Or my golden gauntlets, apparently. Which I don't think actually helps us. <laughs> we already got into light trial. But we can mark those. We also have blue gauntlets now because custom colors. Oh, they look cool in first person. You were almost yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> the Spirit Temple key. Well, now I feel compelled to go to Spirit Temple again. It is funny how, like, in No Logic, I feel like sometimes you're like, oh, well, the game wants me to do this. 
when in reality, <laughs> it doesn't want you to do anything. Right. Uh, unfortunately, the Golden Gauntlets, if we had Zelda's Lullaby, it would open up another fairy check, but we don't have Zelda's Lullaby, so. Still can't get any of those. It is looking more and more likely that Zelda's Lullaby could be locked behind, um... It could be locked behind uh, one of the fairy fountains. You're definitely running low on checks. Although we do have three checks that are... not three. We have two checks we can get in this room right here. I don't think you need to use that bad, right? You can come in from the top after this. Uh, I guess I technically could, yeah. Although I'd still be key locked out of quite a few checks. I mean, not having Zelda's Lullaby means I can't get four things already, but I did get the Forest Temple Compass. Let's go. That's pretty hype. And Din's Fire. I can fairy spell. So I don't have Zelda's lullaby. Um, I can't go through there. I okay. I think I if I hover up to the top of here, <laughs> um, I will be able to get in and beat Spirit Temple. Can you I'm hover to that switch too? The hammer switch. Well, the hammer switch doesn't spawn any chests. Because uh, oh, the hammer switch just opens up the path to, like, the, it's the shortcut. shortcut. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was thinking of the chest that, yeah, like how the, when you play Lullaby, it spawns too. Mm hmm. Alright. Good luck. I'm sure I can get high enough to do this. I want to at least try. Oh, well. <laughs> I would decided that I was just gonna place down the Amchu, I guess. Instead of actually uh back and shielding it. Jim, just an FYI, you are at 425.40 or so. Alright. I get anywhere higher? Yeah. Alright, I think maybe it might be a better bet. Um... I think, actually, the... The play here might be to go to Zoro's Domain and Ice Cavern uh, as adult Link. Which the fastest way to get to would be going through Lost Woods. Is there, out yeah, of curiosity, what was that game stable? Oh, I was just gonna say, I guess that is like a whole area that's still kinda just open. Out of curiosity, is there a spoiler? Yeah, there is a spoiler line. Uh, I would have to get it off of my 3DS, though, because it does get created on the 3DS. Ah. So it's, it's not something that, like, we can view in-game or anything. I just hope that, like, Zelda's Lullaby or Light Arrows isn't at, like, some location that somehow I missed and everybody else just forgot about. Like, I would be kind of surprised if that happened. It's gonna be like a chest in Kukiri for us. <laughs> it's like, oops, we forgot to check a Mido's house chest. Alright, so we don't have the last and Deku Tree. That's what I... <laughs> oh, right, yeah, we oh, can get that. Oh, the bombable too. wall one, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so to get into Zora's Domain, I actually have to do a pretty precise hookshot jump here uh, off of this ladder. Which I'm sure to do. Oh, 
not kidding, not quite. A little bit higher. I don't think that's gonna work. Unfortunately, I was still holding target when I launched up into the air, so I didn't get a very good camera view of that. We can try again, though. Instead, have to do a ledge clip. Here. Get out of bounds. Alright, so there's a piece of heart that's out here in the open on the uh, floating ice. That was an interesting interaction. Which is a heart piece. So we're just gonna sink down to the one that's at the bottom here. Which what is that? Oh, that's another bow. Yeah. Alright, now we can use 40 arrows. bow and bottom azor fountain bow both of them are very funny so far <laughs> and i don't have hover boots so i have to kind of just go over the base normally here to get into ice cavern Yeah, Ice Cavern, not particularly check dense. Um, it does have seven locations, but that's a lot less than most other dungeons, except for, I guess, maybe Jabu. Not typically a very high priority location. But it does look very cool in 3D. I do like how they uh, made the graphical changes to it to pretty it up. Yeah, I feel like this dungeon got the biggest touch up. Forest Temple map. Jim, out of curiosity. I'm sorry that I keep pestering you about this, but what is the uh, the length of the wrong warp? Uh, well, it's it's gonna take a bit longer than usual because I have to damage down to zero hearts uh, from twelve and a half with double defense. But once we like actually get down to zero health, it shouldn't be more than maybe like a few minutes. All right, you're at four thirty-two. I'm not sure when you want to call it. Um, uh, yeah, we'll probably go through Ice Cavern and check King Zora, and if if there's absolutely no progress made by then, okay, uh, then we might be able to just call it there, and we can do the fun act of checking the spoiler log. So this chest, normally Ice Cavern map, is a Druido Training Grounds key. Fire. The blue fire, while well, we have the blue tunic with the blue Hylian shield and the blue gauntlets. 
Amazing. Actually, you, you won't, I bet I know what we're gonna find in here. Oh, I yeah? want to bet we're gonna find ice arrows in here to complete the blue item check. How much I want to bet? A mm, thousand dollars. That's a pretty hefty bet. Yeah, I just, bet, you know, I'm feeling good. I'll bet a thousand and one dollars. What? Ooh. No, I can't believe I got outgamed again. <laughs> so you're only a gamer if you spend exorbitant amounts of money. <laughs> Oh, there's Sun Song. I guess that technically gives us one check. Uh, that's a bunch of Deku seeds. You are a heart container. Not a heart container. Hey, hey, Game Stable. I've got a Shamam mm -hmm. fact for you that I bet you didn't know. Okay. Did you did you know that Shabams love you very much? Aww. Aww. That's reassuring to hear. Thank you. You're welcome. I would like to thank you very much for your wholesome fact, Ada. Yeah, of course. Hey, they told me, all right? Wait. Huh? You've talked to the Shabombs before? Uh, what's the question? You've talked to the Shabombs before? No comment. Hmm. Can we drop this? Drop what? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. In the realm of checks, we have another map. Fire Temple map. And that's our second map here in Ice Cavern. I, for one, can't wait to see what the Iron Boots chest is. Games Table and I together have two grand riding on it not being Ice Arrows. This is definitely an anxious moment, which we're going to have to go get some blue fire first before. I'm confident. And we'll do another cool jump right here. You <laughs> yes, <laughs> just Are you kidding me? No. I've always done something much more complicated than that. I mean, the other setup is fine in like 100% because you have to get the sculpture and the rupees anyway. Yeah, that's fair. This room nice. looks so good in OT 3D. I know, this room is so cool. I love it. Just looks endless in all directions. Wow, that camera was really whack with the hookshot out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna get two items in a row here. Spirit Temple Key and a Water Temple Key. All right, Jim, pay up. I'll take those 500 gift subs, please. <laughs> <laughs> or 200? 200 gift subs. Well, if you want me to make a grand, it is 500 gift subs, but... Yeah. I or feel like so. a, a, a direct donation would be cheaper. You're probably right. Look, I don't care how it gets to me. Just, just that it gets to you eventually. You didn't yeah. give me a time limit, so... Mm, you could pay me a dollar every day for three years. That's true. That also works. Game Stable wants 1001, though, and I have no idea how to do that, so... Yeah, 1001's not divisible by very many numbers, so... Also, is we did prime? just walk through King Zora, because his collision goes away. 1001 is not prime. Purple rupee. Alright, well... We did get Sun Song, so I feel inclined to check the Sun Song grave, since it's on our way to... Uh, the final boss, anyway. But we unfortunately still have not found Light Arrows or Zelda's Lullaby. So 
So by playing Sun Song in this grave, if I can play it, uh, we will spawn in another chest. And this one has 20 Deku sticks. Oh yeah, you did not get a Deku stick upgrade yet. Yeah, somehow. Alright, who's ready to damage down? Me, me, me. We'll get there eventually. It's just a very gentle hug. And this is why you don't see a lot of death hole wrong warps in 100%. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think this seed has gone on long enough. Um, so we're going to be doing a trick um, known as a death hole wrong warp. And... Um, This wrong warp uh, is basically going to allow us to get directly to the final boss. Because um, at this point, we're definitely going to go way over five hours if I try to... Well, actually, hold on. I never got this. Uh, no, here, you, you sure. checked it. You checked it. It's a gold skull the token, if memory serves. Oh, right, yeah. I, I didn't actually collect it, but I looked at it through the wall. That sounds mm -hmm. right. I don't know how I remembered that, because that was four hours ago, but for some reason, that is in my brain. I mean... You can confuse light arrows for gold sculptula tokens, but no, yeah, it is. Hey. I just really needed my 45th token. Hey, I feel you. I'd like to so, thank all the gamers that have been in. Please, reminder to follow Jim's Twitch, and also check out the randomizer. I will post both those links. Yeah, if you guys want to play the randomizer yourselves, uh, it's not very difficult to set up, at least in my opinion. Um, most people seem to echo the sentiment that it's pretty easy to set up if you have your own 3DS and a North American version of the game. All right. So now it's time for the fun to begin. Uh, I want to make sure... No, I do not want to use my fish. I want to make sure that I have my fish on... Um, the X button here. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be dropping down a bomb here, and then right as the bomb explodes, I'm going to jump slash and die into this uh, grotto. This is going to spawn us at the Lakeside Laboratory because, you know, where, where else would falling into this grotto spawn you? And now, you might notice on the bottom screen that I actually don't have anything there. Um, this is because the bottom screen is mimicking what it does on the title screen. Because what I did is after I fell into the grotto, I actually just straight up quit the game. So the game is actually in a mode where it sort of thinks we're on uh, the title screen right now. And I'm going to be trying to do a glitch here called Ocarina Items. Um, I'm specifically going to be doing Quick Draw Ocarina Items just because it's easier. I failed it the first time. And using Ocarina Items, I'm going to play the Nocturne of Shadow. Right, so we did the Quick Draw there, so now I need to just jump and use Bottle Sword. So now Link's just kind of swinging his sword through his head. Uh, so... As you guys all know, uh, Nocturne of Shadow is a warp song, and it's a very cool warp song at that. Uh, because, and I'm sure you guys didn't know this, it actually takes you to the Ganon's Tower Collapse sequence, which is very cool. So now we can beat the game. Despite the fact that we never got Zelda's Lullaby, uh, or Light Arrows, and we never beat the Shadow Temple. Even though, if we beat the Shadow Temple, we would have finally gotten the Spear Medallion. Hey, I'm just proud of you for getting here. Nice oh, work. Thank you. Yeah, game stable. You could use some work. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but... Yeah. I mean... I taught you about your bombs, so I kind of think that... I was, I was just was joking. For me I, I was, I was actually, it was, um, it was a joke. I, I was actually really.
grateful about the Shabam stuff, but I can't be too outwardly, you know, grateful because ah, Jim's the runner, you know, and I gotta, you know. Yeah. But yes, yeah. you you were the most important member of this team. You did provide Jim, all the Shabam facts. Jim is kind of fragile. <laughs> I'm only fragile when I'm hearing Shabam facts, though. <laughs> but I mean, hey, if you want to make me stronger, you just shoot me with a slingshot pellet, and I will do vector addition and become stronger. That's actually true. Wow. Yeah, so after we're done here, um, we can take a look at the spoiler log and see where Zelda's lullaby and light arrows were. Because I'm sure everybody is dying to know that. Let's let's guess. Let's guess. I'm gonna Game guess stable. that Zelda's lullaby was at the Death Mountain Great Fairy. Okay, and light arrows. Uh, light arrows, probably in the latter half of Shadow Temple. Let's say the boss key chest. I'm gonna say that Zelda's lullaby was Furor's Wind. And light arrows was double defense. I'm gonna say that Zelda's lullaby was not the boss key chest in Shadow Temple, but the other chest in that same room. All right. And the <coughs> light arrows was. That last Sculptula and Decker Tree. All oh, right, the Sculptula and Decker Tree. If it's the Sculptula and Decker Tree, I'm gonna be like rolling my eyes at myself. He's I've gonna be essing his MH. Essing his MH, dude. All right, so we did a trick here um, where I used Din's fire at the same time I entered this cutscene. Uh, this actually allows me to keep the Master Sword for the first phase. Uh, so the first phase can actually be a lot faster now. I can do Master Sword Jump Slashes. Every other uh, attack onto Ganon's tail only does uh, one hit point of damage. Oh yeah, also, uh, to anyone who ever uh, does this fight in the randomizer, don't get ISG here. Uh, bad things will happen. So we got time coming up here pretty soon. GG, Jim. You're underestimate. We're underestimate. Who knew that you could get underestimate with the power of death hole wrong warping? Because you weren't able to complete your actual seed. <laughs> All right, so. Gotta press the B button and time. GG. GG. So thankfully, because we found Nocturne, we were able to beat the No Logic Seed. Uh, so I'd like to thank Gymnast86 for coming on and doing this wonderful show. I know it perhaps didn't finish the way you wanted, but I had a great time, and this was genuinely the comfiest show we've had so far. It was just like chill vibes for five hours. Uh, so everybody, if you enjoyed uh, any of the run you saw tonight, please give Gymnast a follow on Twitch, twitch.tv slash gymnast86. We're going to look at the spoiler log here in just a moment. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank everybody. And Gamesable, thank you. Uh, commentary is very informative. A lot of people were telling me that they loved the fact that another dev was on talking about stuff. So thank you for joining. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. And Jim, give us the bad news. First, I have to make sure my 3DS can connect over FTP. There we go. And we can get out our spoiler log. 192.168. No way, mine's like that too. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> me too. Wow, I can't believe it. 
the magic of internal IP addresses. And also a last second plug again uh, for the randomizer that Games Table and Gymnast were lead developers on, um, co-developers, cohorts. They were they worked on it, and you can join the Discord and find out information on the randomizer and how you can add it to your system or play it when you want to play it. I am just really I'm a great showrunner right now, guys. That's all I gotta say. Uh, join that Discord. And enjoy Ocarina of Time 3D Randomizer. Gymnast, take it away. All right, so the moment of truth. It turns out that light arrows were in the Spirit Temple Compass Chest, which is lullaby locked. Fun. So we were definitely mm. not going to find the light arrows without finding lullaby first. And Zelda's lullaby was in the Water Temple Gold Sculptula Central Pillar, which I believe is lullaby locked. Yeah, you have to mm. lower the water at least one level. Yeah, so because you have to lower the water, um, you can't open doors underwater in any way, shape, or form, right? I don't believe so. Actually, wait. Could you, like, um, the, the central pillar room? Yeah. Uh, is that room, um, always loaded with the tunnel at the bottom that goes to, like, the area with all the enemies that you have to defeat underwater and the other key? Um, I'm not sure. Because if, sure. if you could load that room and then go back to load the central pillar. Maybe. Then you <laughs> could go up and get that Sculptula. The TLDR, though, is that this seed was... A, oh, yeah. Uh... Lo logically, like, Zelda's <laughs> Lullaby was behind needing Zelda's Lullaby. <laughs> so that's fun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, last moment. Congrats to uh, to Jim on on finishing, regardless, and thank you to both of you. Any last words you got before I give the little outro? Uh, well, I guess I got something else I need to go test. So that'll be fun. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but Game yeah, I, I don't think I have anything else. Uh, I'm just glad that we got to show this off, and I hope some people check it out. Uh, me and Jim and others worked really hard on it, so. Nice. It it shows. It's very, it, it seems very well done. Um, all right. Well, that's going to be it for Challenger approaching this evening. Please be sure to stick around. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here, and then we'll be raiding someone afterwards, so please be sure to stick around. Uh, really quickly, just another reminder that uh, tomorrow, uh, or technically today, Saturday, uh, Tina's RPG show will be showing off uh, Final Fantasy VII starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. Also, information on all the Hotfix shows is available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. From there, you can find out more information about submitting your runs to any of our weekly shows. Thank you, as always, for joining on Challenger Approaching. This show is every other Friday night at 7 or 10 p.m. Eastern. And uh, two weeks from now, we'll be back with Fall Guys challenges, which should be interesting. So... Gamers, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there, get vaccinated, and uh, we'll see you when we see you.